tap out, to groove. The psychedelic checkers on the record albums have their own we don't want you to smoke genetically modified ganja. We want you to smoke the real thing. We want you to smoke the natural herb. Some call it marijuana. Some call it sense media. Some call it lamb's bread. And some people call it all it. Welcome to another edition of the Adam Dunn Show. I'm your host, Adam Dunn. And in the studio, we have a whole new, whole, all new blood, new, new, uh, see, see how quick we are around here? <laughs> the blood just keeps pumping, but MTI and JTI, the new interns. All right. Hello. Uh, Yo. Mark. And you could be, what are you, RTI now? Are you, what are you? Ribs. Right, are yeah, they got, they got changed. That was an audible. Are you a ribs right or are you a, are you a, well, I'm both. A, 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 a who I know you as. You're just like, yeah. All right, so it's Joel slash Ribs, DJ Ribs. <laughs> nice. I, I have multiple personalities. And yeah. yes, we're late. We're sorry. The kid completely fucking sabotaged us. I can't right. believe it. When he left, he turned every knob. And I remember him saying, "You got to turn every knob." And I was like, "Do you?" <laughs> but apparently, you do. And so he turned every freaking knob back to zero. Plus, turned every switch and just a little tiny secret hidden switch somewhere. The fan yeah. power for the microphone. The right. fan power that's for the microphone. Yep, oh my was. god! Yeah. There's 20 minutes of frantic uh, button pushing going on there. So yeah, it was good. It was a good test. That's right. It was a test. Thrown it was right a in the fire. It was a testicle. It was a complete testicle, and it was done <laughs> uh, totally deliberately by the kid. That's his way of uh, probably testing the the new blood. If right. you want to, you want to move that like tiny bit over so you don't look like half a face because that's kind of weird. You look, you look like you're floating. Yeah, just not too far. Not, you know, don't, don't try to dominate the picture. Though. That's not going to happen. <laughs> Holy moly! What happened now? It got wrecked. Oh man, I thought it got. We're all good. I was like, wow, white out. Anyway, so uh, you have your own podcast. Yeah, I do the BB podcast. It's uh, Brothers Brer, and uh, we do that every Tuesday night. We do that live from the Bonnie Bray Tavern. That's, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. So so actually uh, answered our beckoning call when we said we were looking for some tech help, which is awesome, and uh, and got out of work early. Excellent. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. I literally... I was really surprised. By the powers of the it. Adam Dunn show, managed to get him <laughs> out of work early on Fridays. Now. Three hours early on Fridays, man. That's a fucking yeah. deal. Any, and anybody who wants to intern and works on a Friday, I could probably get you out, too. Yeah, man. So we could have a whole bunch of just people who just <laughs> don't want to get out of work early on Friday crew. Absolutely. Which wouldn't be hard to find. I mean, how many people out there? Like, hey, this is nice. Hey, I'll I could say that. I'm interning on this show. And if, as long as the show face once in a while and you don't have to actually be on the show. Right. Like, you're lucky. Because now you can go. When you show your, you know, tell them, yeah, yeah, it was great. Oh, Thanks. yeah. And then they're going to see you really are here. Yep. When they and, tune in. Yeah. You know, absolutely. Yeah. And they're going to know that you really are working hard. Very hard. 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 Very, yeah, very hard. I always, you know, <laughs> hard at taking dabs. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. They're like, damn you. And make sure, we kick, make sure you take as many dabs as you want before your people at work are over so they can know it. You know, you're right. Like, absolutely. Yeah, I think yeah. That's, a good, that's a good call. Uh, but you love weed too, right? Absolutely. Right. Yeah, just, making sure, yep. just making nah, sure. Just making sure. I've been smoking since I was 15, man. So, yeah. Well, that's the magic age. That's what I tell everybody. Every time I every right. time I do a ch- like a panel, I start talking about smoking when you're 15, and everyone right. looks at me all funny. And I'm like, I'm just being honest, dude. I mean, come on. This right. is when, when most of the fucking experimentation goes around. But it's weird too because I have a four year old now. So when I think about 15 year olds, I look at them. I'm like, man, they don't look old. They don't look like I did when I was 15. Yeah. I looked way older. But we looked like <laughs> scrawny little shits back then too. So 100. Uh, percent Even like <laughs> even and I knew it at the time. I looked even. Because I always looked really young for my age when I was a kid, and I was always bummed. I was like, "Damn, I'm never gonna look older." Right. You know what I mean, I looked like a kid. Yeah, you always now. have that syndrome where, like, the 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 grade under you always looks still like way younger than you still. You know what I mean, mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and the older ones look way older than you. And you're like, "Where am I in this?" Woo. Right. When but you get there, you're like, oh, I don't feel that." Like old now I'm in the middle. Yeah. I'm literally almost a middle aged man. It's crazy. <laughs> I'm like, "This is nuts." I'll be like. Fuck, now I'm one of them. <laughs> oh, get off my lawn. Right. I don't have much of a lawn, luckily, so I don't have to worry about that. Yeah. So on the show today, and we have uh, Leo from Aficionado Seeds is going to call in. And we've checked this Skype, so we know that's 
working. Everything's working today, and, and uh, hopefully the sound is good. I haven't checked on this. I haven't checked on the chat gang yet. But uh, actually, do you have a computer with you or no? No, I have a tablet. Oh, I have yeah. my tablet. Yep. And you, yeah, you should just jump on the chat and gotcha. keep an eye on that because I miss a lot of stuff, and that's always a good. Gotcha. That's a good sideline job. The guy on the chat, I then the you. chat room knows you're paying attention, and then they can actually, you know, then they're going to be mad when you don't answer them when you're <laughs> right in front of their face. All right. All right. But uh, we have Leo from Aficionado calling in, and also Mean Gene's going to jump on the mic with him, and they're both from Aficionado Seeds. And, I mean, last year they – not the, well, I should say two years ago because last year is already – happened uh t- two years ago they crushed it at the emerald cup awesome. um and then this year i, I didn't really pay att- i wasn't paying attention to the placement but i think they did play somewhere uh we'll find out how they're doing with that but they've been putting out a steady line of uh impressive stuff and i mean their booth is just phenomenal like when, whenever you go by the booth you're just like holy shit man that's just it's like you know the you know when you see like the one bar in town that's just fucking rammed and like all the bars around it they're still serving alcohol, but no one's at them. You no know what I mean? yeah, yeah. It's the same with those guys sometimes. You'll see. I mean, everybody's selling seeds. And then those guys are selling, not only are they selling seeds, they're selling seeds for fucking sometimes 50 bucks a pop. I mean, like right. crazy price seeds. And it's still backed up. You know what I mean? So you're like, oh, something's going on. You know what I mean? So we're going to talk to Leo, get some back, uh, you know, a little back information on why these, you know, genetics are making people pay so much and or, you know, and, and I know it's like, it's, you know, it's really all on the eye of the beholder when it comes to the price of seeds because you can sell them for 10 cents a seed. You can sell them for 100 bucks a seed. You, you can sell them for whatever price you can put on it. Right. As long as they get something good out of it, then everybody's happy. It's just when people sell shitty seeds. Then then all of a sudden, get, you know, you're a pollen chucker. <laughs> well, it's just not even that. It's right. just more of like, you know, and if you get them and it happens, then you just have to sort of like take it for as a hit and not. Them, you know what I mean, and that's why it's just important. Just check them out. You know, that's, that's the yeah. You know, the, that's the kind of bottom line of everything is getting them out there to people who uh, can grow them in different conditions, and then that way you get a good idea. Because you know, if you give them to the best guy who's the best grower and he does a good job, that's okay. But it doesn't mean anything really compared to you know you got to give it to the best, the worst, in between all of them, and see which ones work. Because if it's only great growers, and you know, which is obviously who you're going to give them to anyway, out of the gate, you're going to say good grower good grower you know good grower but in general it's also good to kind of give them to first timers and things like that and see what happens with them sure and if they all of a sudden go like boo <laughs> and then you know you got yourself a, a super winner right oh well, there you go see the packaging boom nice and uh we uh are going to be brought that's all brought to us as far as this uh we're going to change i'm going to kind of throw it down we, we just kind of came up with it of course but like at four o'clock each show, uh, at least f- for the near given, you know, we have so many breeders out there that we'd like to talk to, um, kind of do it as the, uh, the breeder hour brought to you by seed care now, which is, you know, they have 35 breeders in the corral right now. And pretty much that's a shitload of time talking to people. Right. It's almost a year. It's almost a year, you know, and we might obviously going to miss a few weeks here and there, but it's, yeah, you know, for the most part, we could definitely do that. And, Obviously, they bring us all over the place, too. So with Seeds Here Now, I mean, there'll be uh, opportunities at trade shows all over the states with these guys to, uh, you know, and to maybe then, then kind of focus on some of the breeders that are from those areas or whatever. But Yeah. So today's the first official Seeds Here Now brings you <laughs> the breeder hour, 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 hour. Sweet. They have that game. Yeah. Um, and they brought us some, a little... Uh, commercial too so cool. I got to uh, it's at the info at Adam Dunn show uh, thing if you want to check there it up. there should be there should be some awesome incredibly produced this morning <laughs> production <laughs> of, <laughs> of. Um, All right. but everybody says sounds good which is great because awesome we you, know, you guys it's your first day it was sounding shit at first. It was yeah. going all over the well, place. We were in outer space. We were in outer space. <laughs> the kid wasn't answering. He was sabotaging us. Triply, triply sabotaging. He was like, oh, I was on the other line. I was like, what? <laughs> you did not see me frantically fucking. Right. I was, I was doing the panic. Uh, the kid. It's all about the kid. And then it literally, as you guys hit the button, he answered. You know. That's so funny. Like, That's yeah, how it works. 
Uh, um, no. Uh, info at Adam Dunn Show dot com. I thought it might be. I don't know. Is it? Hmm. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I, didn't. I don't know. I have to hold on. We'll we'll figure it out. Don't, don't yeah. You okay. Worry. Don't you worry. Um. And uh, here, let me just let me pull it up. <laughs> you want to incorporate that in the shout out since we kind of already started? Let's yeah. let's start pulling those up anyway because I want to do that. Uh, Get that all out of the way, have right. a few minutes in between, and then uh, get all those guys on the line, which is going to be, yeah, already in half an hour. So, excellent. Let's just bang it out of the park right there with Build a Soil, Shout just out. like you will if you use their organic uh, combinations that they have, which is uh, they have their own soil combos. They also have all the amendments that you'd ever need. They've got Grokashis, they've got. Clatamus Coots, their top uh, dressing, which is awesome. Then they've got the uh, uh, basically with these guys, anything uh, microbial, anything in that uh, for that rhizosphere that you're thinking about when you talk about the best quality products, these guys are the ones. Um, it's funny too because every time I think I'm going to bring them something, I look, I'm like, God damn it, they already got it. How do they do that? <laughs> Jeremy's on point. He's always doing. He's always looking for new stuff. Um, but you know it all, and because we say new, it's not really new. It's all ancient usually. But at the same time, uh, you know, he's he just kind of simplifies it for you in a one-stop place, and it ships everywhere, which is great too. Because you know, a lot of, I mean, especially not with the big stuff, it's kind of ridiculous. But when it's uh, a kilo of something that's uh, super hard to find, like coconut or aloe or something like that, right. that you know is good for your plants. He's already sourced it, got it all ready for you to go. So that's uh, buildasoil.com, and uh, you can also just call them direct at the very top of the page. Top of the page, top of the page. Mm. Boom, 855-877-SOIL. I should know it by now, but I don't. But after you've <laughs> called them a few times, you probably will, will remember it also. Absolutely. Uh, buildasoil.com, though, is definitely, uh, they're my guys. So, And uh, let's see, who you got pulled up next? You got Way to Grow up there? Let's get, let's get Way to Grow up. Crossover. Good crossover. Let's see. We'll do way to grow. Boom, way to grow. Now, if you're <laughs> talking about uh, picking up product for large scale production locally here in Colorado, then, or even small scale, whatever, whatever scale you're at, um, way to grow has been around for about 14 years now, and they've got seven shops here all over Colorado. So pretty much anywhere, even at the close to the mountains up in Silverthorne, they've got uh, a shop they just opened up there last year. And uh, great website, real uh, informative. Just updated it. You know, obviously, always updating it, but really updated it last year. And uh, it's good to see it's doing it's a good, Anybody strong uh, website with some good information there. And then on uh, locally, though, like I said, with, I think right now, what's their big sale? Can you pull up their sale at the moment? Local. Yeah, let's see what their sale is. Oh, it's Smart Pots. And that's uh, – no, it's not because that's until January 25th. So – Hmm, they haven't updated their website enough for me at this point, but uh, <laughs> swing into their spot anyway and use the Adam Dunshow code uh, to get yourself a discount regardless of what is for sale at that given moment. Uh, and let's jump over to our guys right down the street from them over at Incredibles. Ciao, Incredibles handcrafted edibles here in Colorado, the number one by far edible out there and uh, available like a nuclear strike all over the place when you look at the map you can't Ooh. even you could never even see your house in the, if you live in anywhere centrally in colorado because they've got it covered and yep. uh yep <laughs> yeah no th yeah these guys that's something i know about <laughs> I don't oh, know, but a bunch of other girl stuff. But incredibles edibles i know about for sure <laughs> well they're they're definitely the most reliable consistent edible out there uh here in colorado for sure and now they are in uh, vegas uh, well i should say nevada and uh they are also in cali and they're about to spread out in those places i mean right now they're just just moving in uh they also make a great extractor called the incredible extractor so if you are in the industry and you want to pick up an extractor they're the guys to go to That's sour band and then they also make their obviously in-house concentrates that are the fire. The, bl the black label is their their own that they grow from you know they, they, they those you're guaranteed. I mean 
and because every single one of those things has, has been grown with care and on top of that processed uh you know and they know that they know their strains real well so definitely check those guys out their pens are on fire too if you can give you if you can pick them up yeah because right. they're pretty hard they're almost always sold out um and they'll be at i'm sure any of the bigger trade shows and they're easy to talk to guys and very knowledgeable so good good guys to talk to you i love incredibles.com if you want to check those guys out and our buddies over at new millennium who were on the show a couple weeks ago um they were at the other show the indo x still last week and giving away tons of samples and got a lot of feedback from people who came up to the booth and said they had just you know heard about the ad on the show and they were psyched because they could actually pick up a sample so we we timed mm-hmm. it perfect because we you know let them do most of the work but we also got people who called in and got all those numbers and names and addresses to the guys over at New Millennium this week so they're going to ship those out for you and it'll give you the samples of uh, the Ruby the Decision and the Winter Frost so those are going to go out to all our listeners who have contacted us and if you nice. haven't contacted us still you can still go to info at Adam Dunn show and I'm sure we can squeeze you in and get you a sample of those so do it yeah my drummer came back with a box of that stuff from the Indo Expo right so yep. yeah he was one of those guys yep. so uh, newmillenniumnutrients.com is, is the website and uh, great product I love the fact that they're based on seasons you know so kind of gets you so you get into a rhythm where you know where you're at just because you know what season you're you're in at that moment so you're like okay it's you don't want to linger too long in the same one you move on to the next and as you do those that decision product helps because it uh you know spins you from the one to the next and actually gets you kind of a boost right off the gate and then that winter frost is kind of the opposite where it finishes you off and slows you down with so kind of give you those timing things which is great and then that ruby is just a eight all along because it's got a lot of ruby it's got a a lot of fulvic in it Mm. and uh, it's a great product um and our guys over at oh hold on a sec boom oh thank you sir boom uh, uh, crack those be one and, and uh, help these guys out at grow stone because make you know, some grow stone every bottle that you drink whether it be beer or something as long as it's not plastic because we don't do plastic but any glass bottles that are recyclable we can also take them. We can recycle them, turn them into grow stones, grow plants in them, grow them in full hydro. If you want to use them 100%, and you just go for that. You can do that. You can mix them with cocoa. You can mix them uh, with soil, which is the way I use them normally, or with uh, peat or things like that. You can use them as a, dr- as a drainage with the larger pieces. Um, you can also use the top, which is the smallest pieces, for like a kind of a barrier to keep your your gnats and your bullshit out like that so great products recyclable 100 percent american made maybe recycle plastic bottles so you can just drink more beer like us excellent gives us an excuse during the show it's my favorite sponsor just for that one reason right. one. you give me the excuse yeah. to drink beer before 4 20 on a friday it's <laughs> like you pushed push start our week thank you guys and you can push start your plants uh growstone.com if you want to see if they're available locally, if not, just tell your uh, local grow shop to pick them up. Help them out, you know. Give them some different spontaneity and some new stuff. Uh, and I you can pick them up, like I said, uh, check out the website, but you can pick them up uh, hopefully locally. And if not, get them there. Growstone.com and our friends. I think that's all the friends we uh, have. I think we have one more friend. <laughs> Do we always say one more friend? Do we have like, friend? I keep always forgetting. I think it's written down on the wall, so we don't. Right. Now I feel bad. We need to get a dry erase. I always feel like we missed somebody. I'm like, ah, oh, did we miss somebody? We <laughs> must have missed somebody. Uh, uh, no, we haven't. No, I think we have actually. Yeah, I think we're. Uh, yeah, we kind of did, but we didn't. Really? Well, no, because we do, we normally just see here now in this zone too. But we've talked about them so much in the beginning. Oh, we they they were the segue into the I know the shout out section. Yeah. But yeah. because we talked yeah, about other stuff, but we're still going to say seeds here now dot com. Seeds here now, our Blue. boys. But seeds here yeah. now, seeds here yeah. now. Oh, I have to talk about a drop. That's what I was going to say. I knew it was something. Ah, my brain. Sorry, guys. Oh, you're good. I have the message from those guys. Big, long, huge one too. So hold on. Where'd it go? Uh, um, so here it is. No. 
Oh, it's the Cedaholics. Okay, one thing, big thing, is that his Cedaholics website is up, and he's got rare um, packs of auctions going up. He's asking me and all the other breeders to bust out some of their craziest old school shit, some of the things they made stuff with, um, long lost packs, things that people have, you know, kind of thought were gone. All of a sudden, they open up a shoebox. We're like, whoa. <laughs> I did find something, so all those are going to go up on this auction. Awesome. I don't think that's the one, is it? I don't think that's no. the one. The no. Jaguar peas, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some crazy strain of Jaguar yeah, peas, dude. man. <laughs> seed O-holics. You got seed O-holics or A-holics? I got A-holics. Yeah, so it's seed O-holics. Seed O. Mm-hmm. Seed O-holic. Seed O-holic. Oh. What? Server mm. not found. Mm. Well... I think it's almost up. Either way, it's coming up. Keep an eye out for the Cedaholic website. Hopefully, James. Yeah, uh, says oh, he's got it. See, somebody's got it. Uh, right, let's see. You just spell it. You got. Seed is with an S. There, something there you oh, go there we go but yeah, I'm right. being, so our boys from you can now you see it see doholics it looking good looks just exactly like we uh, would yes. expect from him so you know where you're at you're like i am at the seats here now see look boom things are already up there fire og uh-huh back crawl. and uh let's see Workle. Cool. Yeah, we uh, some cream. I don't know that one. It's great to see a place for people to bring stuff to, and uh, you know there is those long lost packs that sometimes you're just like, damn, you know, what? you know, there's so much fire in there, and at the same time, there's only X amount, and it's almost a shame because you you don't grow them on the purpose because you know you can't grow. You know what I mean? It's like you get in a situation where. It's not like you're gonna, once you grow it, you got to then hang on to it. It's alive. It's a living thing. Right. So you always hang on to like those 10 or 20 thinking you're going to do something with them. And I mean, we're all like that. Right. So there's tons of those out there that are so, so much killer shit that if you just get someone who buys them and actually grows them right out of the gate. especially You, you bid on these? Yeah, these are auctions. It's like a seed bay? Yeah. Interesting. Crazy. Yeah, so he just launched that. It's been going well. Ooh. So uh, I think he's had a really kind of beta version going at first but uh yeah now it seems to be up and rolling that's awesome to see the ebay of seeds it is, it is <laughs> yeah. don't say that just don't ever no, say yeah. that don't ever exactly. say that exactly yeah don't ever say that My it's bad. all silver news anyway it's it. all silver news um so i think we got yeah we got like 20 minutes which is perfect um let's see what uh what else okay. I'm telling you, I keep thinking we had one more sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did we get in the chat room? Well, are, are you yeah, I'm in the chat room. Anything happening? Uh, Besides let's see. We, the obvious, Spring Hill, Spring Hill's hanging out. Yeah, <laughs> everyone's just kind of hanging here. Chat room's here. They're like, thank God, Fry. Yeah. Everyone thought I wasn't doing a show. It's okay. I didn't I didn't know. I wasn't 100%. I was like, are we doing or are we not doing? Are we doing or are we not doing? Because I had that Wednesday just had to do right. it. Right, yeah, yeah. And then, of course, you wanted to come in, which was like, I was like, well, he, we got to do a show now. We got we to gotta train train the new guy. Yep, throw him on the fire. And then, of course, that was great because we completely fell underneath the bus. We all fell under the bus at the same time, which is great. So the kid pushed us in front. Thanks, kid. Thanks, kid. The kid just like literally body checked all three of us into <laughs> the like, front of a giant moving bus. Can we just like make him wear that shock watch thing oh, all, the time. all the time? Well, if so. we pay him, I think I think I can do anything I want. We've already come to this conclusion last week. That was that was the deal. Anything? No, not anything. But any, anything <laughs> re- reason, anything reasonable, he'll do it for money. That's that's pretty much what it comes down. Everyone to. has their price. He's a bitch. He's he's, yeah. he's he's just a huge bitch like that. So, kid, you know it. Hundred bucks, I'll be shocking the shit out of that kid. But he wants a piece of everything. That's the problem. He's one of those guys. He's gonna be like. Oh, you made like fucking six hundred bucks on that. I get like sixty bucks. I'm mean, like, ah. <laughs> I'll shot. I'll put the shocker lower. Is what I'll do. <laughs> I'll make a deal. I'll work a deal for every like hundred bucks that I suck off of. 
<laughs> profits he could have had <laughs> from his 10% or whatever. Wow. I'll just turn it down a certain no- couple notches. I say jack it up and pay him more. The other way, yeah, but that's always a, that's always an option. I don't know if I'd pay him more, but <laughs> no, I'm, just I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I would pay him. I would pay him to shock him more. He has to sure. wear it in the shower, though. He already knows what he. He's got it all figured out. He's got it all figured out. Don't you worry. It's definitely going to be some 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 uh, combos with the with the with the taint patch. I think we're going <laughs> to have to do a taint patch shock collar combo show or something. With right. The, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> with the kid with the kid it'll be a big it'll be a pretty pretty hot show maybe for, not for me but somebody <laughs> somebody <laughs> out there would love it yeah the shock thing is pretty good we, we have to get that off of Mitch because I think he quit smoking officially so we can just take that from him oh, he, doesn't, yeah. he doesn't need sure. it he's got no other vices right? <laughs> he's clean yeah. he's cleaned his soul he's left the Adam Dunn show he's fine that was cool to see him the other day though yeah it was yeah. don't yeah. take it personal though. he quit sure. smoking that he quit Oh, he quit smoking weed too. Yeah, no, yeah. I think he quit for cigarettes. Is why he got the shock collar, not for. I don't think he needed the shock. Thing yeah, but for sm- he nobody needs a shock collar to quit smoking weed. All right, you all just right. need like. No, I worry about like, him. You need to like think you're. I don't know what you. I can't even say why because I would never know. Would I? Right. Yeah. Um, no, you would have to. <laughs> hmm. Last time I stopped was for a drug test at work, and I stopped for three months, and I was still hot. So. I just ended up yeah, our, fake piss bike, for it. Bike yeah. who was on the show, bike who was on the show, he said he was <laughs> like a month and he was still hot. He was just super yeah, hot. Man. Yeah, like he just I I quit smoking weed when I started dabbing. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've been kind of going through that too where I've been smoking a little bit more oil than uh than weed. I used to be a, just a flower guy, but now, now I, 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 I Now I just kind of prefer dabbing, honestly, you know. And, and it's funny because I remember listening to the show that you guys did about the health effects of dabbing. Mm-hmm. And that kind of scared me away from it for a little bit. You know what we I mean? We have that like, tendency to do that. Yeah. We scare everybody, and then they look at us like, wait a minute, you're still dabbing. Like, I didn't say stop dabbing. <laughs> yeah, I just right? said, might have some problems. But, you know, we got to all think of it like both sides, right? Right. God, it's like it's like an MTV show, bro. we got to have the good sides and the bad. Yeah, like, absolutely. Oh, this is so bad. Oh, this is so good. <laughs> so high. So high. Yeah, there's just the pros and cons, you know. I think you're getting, you know. Uh, a cleaner smoke when you're getting dabs, you know, for oh, the most certainly. part, or you know, when you're doing hash oil or smoking I, hash I oil. I stopped coughing up these like gelatinous little masses that mm-hmm. were, right. yeah, like too, it's too pre-emphysema. No. Type. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> okay. Well, it went away. Oh no, yeah. I, I, I moved you, here right, and, just, yeah. and really reduced the amount of um, burning smoke that I've been taking right. in my lungs. Yeah. No, I, I'm. I pretty much can. Uh, I smoke like a bowl or two, and then my throat is see, torched. That, that was yeah. what I was looking for. I wasn't see that. That's that's a commercial. Uh, no messing around. Yeah, that is a commercial. Wow. Here, there you go. Like that's your job. That's your job. Uh, you want As me a, to read it? Yeah. See, I, right. this is why I don't have Mitch around. In your in your radio. Because I just go like this. I just start doing this, and I get and all. And this off. for who? It's for seeds here now. Oh, folks. okay. Seeds it's here folks. now. February specials: ten percent off on Crockett Family Farms, Crockett's Confidential, and Crockett's Dog. Let's see. They got 10% off on all DJ Short Old World Genetic Strains, uh, mm. Obsolete Genetics Group, Alien Invasion Packs, uh, Alien Orange Congolese, Alien Orange Gum, Alien Sour Apple, and Alien Tarantula. And they are seventy eight eighty eight a pack. Uh, Dark Horse Genetics, they got Amadeus Cho, Joe Fixit, and, Rick's jo- and Rick Jones. And they are 88.88 or 88. <laughs> Eighty eight dollars and eighty eight cents a pack. <laughs> yeah, wow. <laughs> Buy any three absolute genetics, get one free pack of the Alien Invasion line. Uh and then uh let's see. Buy one pack of F thirteen throwback and get ten percent off an old world genetics tester free. And then uh orders three hundred and over will get a free three pack of Lambo by TH Seeds. And the last one here is order six hundred dollars and over. We'll get a free three pack of Lambo by TH Seeds and a three and a ten pack of abs, absolute absolute sorry uh, genetics groups twenty seventeen spring mix. Nice. So you can read. That's good. That's part of the deal here. Oh yeah. If you want to work here, you got to be able to read. A yeah. Little bit. Able to read. That's good. That's good. That's a good I'm glad you didn't put me on the spot and I wasn't able to. For some like, That'd oh, be bad. Dude, we didn't talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't, it, <laughs> micro inch, micro inch. Just, uh, no, yeah, kind of. I was going to say square that middle part of the room in the middle part of the room. Just, no, v- 
Vinny's in Where? charge, just going all over the place. We know. We got forehand. Oh, and beer spill. And oh, forehands. No. Beer spilled. This is all bad. Everything See bad. that? Oh, man. What happened in four seconds? Man, that gross just, stones. No, nah, I wanted to go the other way. I wanted, yes, to, yes. wanted to center of the room on the center of the screen. So, so pop the other way. There we go. Right about. Oh, almost. Right there. Stop. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, they're in charge. They're in charge. They're in charge. You just keep spilling stuff like a king over here. This is your deal. Yeah, spill like a king. Spill all your beer. Really? There you go. Your double IPA got double spilled. Just like. It was a gross stone moment. It was a gross, it was a gross yeah. stone. It was brought to you by gross stone. So all those specials, all those specials uh, brought to you by the boys who are going to bring the show in the next 10 minutes. Uh, the. Readers, hour, 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 hour. <laughs> <laughs> gotta do that every time. Well, we gotta. Yeah. We'll make some. Uh, you got some audio stuff in the chat room. You got any questions? Stuff. Oh, and we got some giveaways at the end of it. I know everyone's giveaway. I want giveaway. Give yeah. it away. Give free, it away. Give free, it away. Free, now. free, free. We want it free. Anyway, KTI says we got some seeds. He's gonna post. I think in the chat room, maybe some shit he's got, and maybe I can pull it up or something like that. And if not, everyone can at least. Get an idea, and we're going to do an off the air uh, contest because the on the air stuff. Because there's nudity. Well, just maybe we can like make it a little more comp, either a more complicated <laughs> and or be less straight, just for embarrass the person to just give seats away, like more actual maybe knowledge based or a piece of this, or maybe a question from the show. I don't know. We have to, see, this is the worst part. None of us ever have any pre thought on games or things because giveaways. I hate fucking. Raffles and I hate you right. know, guess the amount of jelly beans in a cup thing. I don't know. I just not hate hate, but I just like oh, like fuck it. Who cares? Like never ever do it. If I see a thing where it says put cards in and there's one card and there's oh, a Ferrari yeah. right there, I won't even put a card in. I'll be no. like, ah, I won't win. There's only one card in there. I'll probably lose. You know what I mean? And he, like you could just like no one's around. There's a Ferrari right there. You should, but it's right. Just, I just don't feel like I'm a winner in that sense. I always feel like ah, whatever. They're gonna see the card and be like, who's this guy? Check him out. Hey, this guy can't win. I don't know something. But right, yeah, probably should, especially some trade shows. Some trade shows, you look around. There's like not, nobody there, and there's like those raffle deals. Those are the ones you should just go in and dump like cards because you probably win half the shit in the spot because there's like eight guys walking around. Right, probably like me not putting cards. <laughs> in. So so if you just did it. Psh, Front load all those bitches. Absolutely. Did you listen to Joe Rogan's thing with um, with uh, uh, Alex Jones? No, I didn't. I, no, I'm not. I haven't heard it either. Anyway, apparently yeah. Mitch Mitch was talking about even starting a whole new. I would think about podcast. I was like, wait a minute, you can't start another podcast. <laughs> that will not. That will not happen. I can't. The Mitch Nasser show will not happen. This is the happening. nuts, the no smoking <laughs> weed show, <laughs> the, the no Mitch, smoking with electroshock Mitch show. Yeah, right. Mitch <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he will. We'll see. He can. He can use the net. He can use the studio. We'll, we'll do it. Yeah. We'll put it on the network. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know where can it will fit. Weed smoke at him all? I don't know where it's going to fit in our schedule, but we could we could do it. We could do it at you know some crazy we could, time. We could he could do is he could should do it. What he should probably do is do like a flotation tank show. With Mitch, wow, and, and then he gets to show off his upper body and stuff, <laughs> come out of the, come out of the water like glistening on the show and yeah. stuff. I think it'd be great. Just the camera, just upper body, a lot of upper body. Yeah, yeah, the, sure. the, the feet, the legs float in the water. It's almost like the guy from South Park, you know, with the huge front guy in the wheelchair <laughs> with the no legs. No, but he can just you know kind of expose the upper body more. So I don't know. The kid can have his own show if he wants. I don't know about getting paid. We can make his own sponsorship or something. <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, come on, guys. Let's oh, get, yeah, Let's man. get creative. Let's get creative here. For more shows? More Dude, shows. Mitch live from the depth tank. That sounds... That sounds... Yeah, that sounds like dude. That's a, that's a good thing, right? Yeah. Everyone would be doing that. But then Mitch will be totally bummed because <laughs> in the, in the, everyone's watching him while he's in the tank. It'll be so fucking horrible. It's like the worst <laughs> ego blown experience ever because you, here you are. I got like a thousand people watching you in a tank. And it's dark, trying to, right? Trying to relax and meditate. You know what I mean? And you're like, they're like what's, it's he deprivation. what's he thinking? <laughs> what's he doing? <laughs> and you're like, I just hear it. You wouldn't even have to hear it, but you could hear it. You could hear it through the knowing that there's a thousand people. Like, oh my god, dude, right? right. It'd be hard. Yeah, because you'd be in your own little world. Yeah, that'd be weird. I don't know, Mitch. Do it, do Altered it, states. do it, do yeah, it. Man. We can. We're pretty good at egging people on those things, you know. So we might be able to do that. Yep. 
We could get Mitch to do it, I think, if we just if we just work as a as a team, everybody. Everybody get Mitch to do a flotation tank show. That's our goal. Floating <laughs> with Mitch. Floating <laughs> with Mitch. <laughs> That's perfect. Because no one's done it, I don't think. Maybe. No. Maybe we're not all. Has, has anybody in this room been into a flotation tank except for you? Probably you have. I've never been. I've never. No, been. I've never. You never been? No. no. It sounds like a trip. Ketamine's man. probably the closest. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. I've never actually done ketamine. I'm just never joking. Buy, I thought it'd be something funny to say. Yeah. yeah. You know. Just making up shit. Yeah. Disassociative. Yeah. Any drugs you talk about on the show, you should have at least done, right? Don't start yeah. talking about things you haven't done. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not here trying to like I tell everyone how what's the best heroin. <laughs> drugs <laughs> in my time. <laughs> well, dude, I know the best her- heroin. No, you know <laughs> we shouldn't make up things. If you haven't smoked crack, don't smoke. Don't don't make. Drugs. I smoked crack once. Oh, see, now you're qualified. I ser- seriously, you're once. the most qualified in the room. Maybe now, actually, now Vinny rolled in, so you're you're totally not the most qualified. Mm. <laughs> Vinny blew you away, bro. <laughs> Vinny said he can make it twice. <laughs> yeah, I never smoked crack, but there was this dude that I used to give a ride to work, and he would roll blunts, and he would put like a ton of coke coke on the blunts that's a primo bro. but yeah but like it didn't do anything to me though like i didn't feel like it didn't like yeah it, it seemed like a waste it seemed like a waste i don't know I, if it even does anything to you or anything but yeah that's that's what i got formaldehyde <laughs> on a joint is much better than coke in a joint anyway. i have figures something you know sherm it up this double, this double is pretty dope today. Huh? It's pretty tasty. Yeah, it's very tasty. I'm not, you know, typically an IPA guy, but right. but I am all about the calling. It's pretty good. I was impressed. Impressed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Impressed. Thanks, Grosstone, for giving us that excuse. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Eight point five. Yeah, Rocky World, especially at early morning. That's a great one in the sun. Do that in the sun, right? <laughs> Make sure you're out there real toasty. Drink around noon. See how long you last. Yeah, like See if you can get through a four pack at noon. I like to give myself sunstroke at the Rocky. What the hell games. is going on? For sure. Uh, I'm just dying over Where here. What if Vinny just drop under my tongue? Oh, my I don't know. God, I would never do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in your mind. You know don't ever let Vinny put drops of <laughs> anything near your tongue. Crazy. And you're doing them. And you're, well, we'll know on the sound. It's all like. It's <laughs> Slow down. Um. So tell me about. Just give me a quick rundown. So only got like eight, I think about. Eight, I think we're gonna see. We're gonna see how on point these guys are, which I believe they are, because they already know the number. I think they know the number. Let me double check. Because I know they can call a number. Uh, we. They're gonna. So if they call in right on time. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Suspicious. That's just, weird, right? Yeah. They gotta yeah. be late. I don't know. Now you can't <laughs> tell them all the secrets. Can't tell them all the secrets, but that's definitely a sus- in our world. <sighs> what? On time? Um, so, uh, tell us a little bit about, because this weekend is super swag that everyone's watching. Right, right, right. right. And, mm-hmm. you're, and you're one of those shows that loves. Sure, to, yeah. I used to have a sports show called the Rerun Sportscast back in the day. And uh-huh. We're kind of like a stoner sports show. So, like, it, you know, we just hang around, smoke pot, talk sports, you know. So. And you do that on your show regularly, too? Uh or in like because this week, of obviously. me, yeah. Okay. Because of me, like I, we bring up sports a lot, and those guys will end up just talking about. It, but we're, we're, they're not like any like sports uh, analysts of any sort or anything. But neither were we when we did it, you know. So, uh, but no, we were just basically Bronco fanboys that just talked a lot, you know, on, on sports and stuff. But so now you're all bitter and, and horrible this week. So. Uh, yeah, a little bit, you know. I mean, definitely you know, rooting you know for Atlanta really, this week. You know, it's hilarious. Yeah. You know, it's hilarious. So, is I was in a room with. Oh, let me see. One, two three four five people right the other day and three of them consider themselves sort of sport fans sort of you know none of them from colorado and we were sitting in a room and somebody's like yeah yeah super bowl this super bowl that and i'm like whatever and then one of them goes like or somebody says who won the super bowl last year right (laughs) none of us could remember like Uh. like all of us were like i don't know bro and then like all of a sudden somebody goes denver and i was like Oh yeah! Oh yeah! It's a I big think, deal. I think, that, <laughs> <laughs> I think that happened here actually, but that's how much we didn't give a fuck. Right. So yeah. like all of us were like sitting in the room and we're like, couldn't, well, one of one of the guys was not in Denver, so he got kind of a pass, but the other two were. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but they were out in Elbert, you know what I mean? They weren't really in Denver. They were like out in the woods somewhere. But they don't give a fuck because they're from Louisiana, so they they were thinking totally like whatever. 
and and at the end of the day, it was like, wow, five people in a room in Colorado. If not, none of us can remember Didn't last know. year that the actual <laughs> team that won was Colorado. Was like, that's funny. That shows you how weird it is. Like, it's such a different. Can be so many different things going on in life, you know. Oh I mean? yeah, like, for sure. Some some people, it's all they care about. You're like, really? Like my cousin, he loves Patriots, you know. So right. He's, he's going off. His, he's going to have his face painted. Oh yeah. He's going to be just crazy, like a yeah. bad episode of fucking Sunny or something. Yeah. You know this time mean? last year, I was running around looking for jerseys and doing the whole thing and getting all caught up in it, you know, because oh my boys are in the bowl, you know, and right. all that. So yeah. But. So well, so the best part is you're not all hyped up and. You might even be around at next week still. Like you'll be like, you're not gonna be all bad, dude. I got a career. Ah, we yeah, party. right. We flip cars over all day. I took like three days of work uh, off after the last Super Bowl to go to, the, to parade and all that stuff. So <laughs> it was all funny. Yeah, was your boss all like, "No problem, bro." Well, they're kind of pissed, but the what made it work out? You were like, "This will, this does not happen every time." Right? right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This doesn't happen every time. It's not gonna happen. You know. Yeah. Yeah, never, that's right. never gonna happen again. Nah, well, it's funny because the first two Super Bowls, I was when I discovered guitar and started smoking weed, and I was totally out of sports. So like, I wasn't in. Like, I followed the Broncos all my life, and then the two years that we were in the Super Bowl, I was like totally not into sports at all. So it was kind of weird. Like, I was just at the Super Bowl parties, drinking with my friends and stuff, you know. But uh, at least you were doing that. Yep. Well, at least yeah, yeah. That's cool. That's like maybe you were the problem. Maybe you. Yeah. You were the curse that they needed to lift. Like, <laughs> or something. Just, dude, right? we got this one fucking kid who keeps coming to the games, fucking everything up. But now he's into fucking smoking weed and fucking. Hell yeah, man! Playing guitar and he's awesome. We're killing it. So yeah, it's good to know that you're you're, you know, you did something good for the you did something good for the team by not paying attention. <laughs> yep. <laughs> or it's like when you lose something. You know what I mean? You lose something. You're like. All I want is that thing, and, uh, and you just focus on it so much, and then the minute you stop thinking about it, oh, yeah. yeah, dude, it's right here. It's They're like, like uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I got you. So that team focus, everybody needs to stop focusing on sports. That's right. That's my recommendation. No, Plus, I hear you. No, <laughs> I was, yeah. I'm a little, I live in I live in fucking Holland, and they went nuts for fucking football. They won. Uh, okay. They won the World Cup in like '93 or something like that. Right. And I was there, and. It was really funny because I was on my rooftop of my building and just watching the crowds that move from down the canals. Mm-hmm. And at one point, I was so bummed because, like, now if I had my phone, I'd been, like, filming it and shit. I'm up on top of my building looking at all these crowds, like, coming, and they're all running, like, towards my building. So I was like, dude, this is the best ad right here. If I could just right. get this shot, <laughs> it looks like they're all running to my door. You know what I mean? Like, go, oh, he's on sale. I right? couldn't use that. I was going to use it for my seed sale thing. Seed sale, woo! That'd be great. People stomping, running down the street. It looked so awesome because yeah. it was, like, 50,000 people running down the street. And they literally were coming across a bridge, and I was on this side of the bridge, and the crowd was coming over the bridge, and the the boat was coming under the bridge and I was on top of my house looking down and it, it just looked like they were coming to my front door like they were gonna <coughs> just whoa they're gonna come storming through the door but <laughs> right anyway that's funny anyway enough sports swag. yeah yeah you guys sports. can't win donkeys are done we're forget over. about it we're over forget about yeah, it yeah especially we get Tony Romo oh jeez um, anyways but yeah any minute now see he's he listened he's all I'm not calling in at four that's lame uh, <laughs> um, let me get make sure he knows the phone number, and if he's listening to the show, it is seven two zero three one zero eight two three seven. Remember that T A D S. Okay. Seven two zero three one zero, which is Cali. So we did okay. that on purpose. So and then eight two three seven, which is Tad's. Tad's. Nine zero two. Cool. What? Nine zero two one zero. Shut the hell <laughs> up with your number fuck upness. Seven two zero, three one zero eight two three seven, and um, maybe he doesn't know the number, so that's probably possible because it has happened. Um, let's say oh yeah, I said I was gonna give him 20 minutes for 10 minutes which i never do because I, uh, I never get on oh yeah i'll give you 10 minutes and then it's like whoa call it now right uh, go in now and i'll make sure and i've done the number so many times wrong i have to double check myself because uh i have sent people <coughs> totally wrong direction with so many am call like what, <laughs> what was i thinking and i had to look at that a237 like five, five times every show right and now it's Eight two three seven. Double check that. <laughs> Is that really Tad's? Uh, let's see. It's 
go to your you go to your thing and you look and you go T A T Yes. Eight two three seven. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's it. See, I, back in the day, that's how you used to use phones. You know. Oh yeah. I I remember my grandmother's number still. It was ST six two six nine six. And you know, just the fact that you did ST and then six. What the fuck's that? You know what I mean? Like. Right. But that's how I always remembered it. So I'd be like, you know, then nowadays, you know, they still use it for advertising. But back in the day, they used it just like in the codes because I don't know, it was weird. Like they try to keep like maybe the ST meant. Sunnyside Queens, probably, because that's where it was. And mm. the T meant whatever else. I don't know. Whatever street. T Street or T Block or whatever. You know, right, whatever. yeah. Because the operators were going like that. So they probably had it all in the Ace of Mice calling. Hey, answer it then, my friend. Oh, yeah. Yo, yo, yo. Is that Leo? Hi, hi, hi. What's up, guys? Yo. Can you guys hear me? Hold on. We need volume. Volume. I have it. Uh, <laughs> hold, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let's see. Yo, yo. Yo, yo, yo. Yo. Oh, there you are. Sorry about that. Got you. You hear me? Right on. Uh, I got you guys. All right, good. We're all, we're all there, loud and clear. Yeah, we were just, uh, you know, <laughs> playing with the knobs, playing with the f- fiddling with the, with the power. How, how, you, how you doing, Leo? I'm good. How you guys doing today? We're good. We're good. We're chilling out in Denver. Uh, just having our Friday typical chit chat session. Spilling beers. You're going to be our official seeds here now. Breeder hour, 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 hour. I have to do that every time. It's an echo. Hour, <laughs> hour, 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 hour. Oh, man. Man. <laughs> man. man, man, man. See? It's working wow. already. It's working already. It's <laughs> working it. already. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> so. Uh, it's good to finally get well we had you on the line once before but and we were at the yeah. show and we wanted to see each other and those were always impossible but uh it's good to get you on here for at least an hour to chit chat with us and talk talk seeds bro talk about absolutely what's going I think on gene should be hopping on pretty soon too. yeah cool we'll definitely patch him in i'll make sure that uh I'll make sure he doesn't drop you and at the same time brings him into the chat. But if he does drop you, just call back in and we'll, I'll, I'll slap him around with my, my, my sound. Sound yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, right on. Sound boy. <laughs> sound boy. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, you're, you're making waves everywhere as usual, which is good because you guys are putting out some incredible genetics and um, also being right – but I think also it's your exclusivity because I have other guys who are like texting me today like – so ask Leo, who's dicky I, I have to suck to get some seeds outside of California, man? And Nobody I'm like, jeez, all right, guys, all right, nobody's, nobody's got to suck any dicks right now. <laughs> you, you can probably, do, <laughs> you can probably just get them through some buddies like Seeds Here Now or some guys like that, you know? Because you guys are doing a drop with them, right? Absolutely. Here we go. Yeah, there's, um, okay, so add, add, gonna... add to group, add to group. Don't just answer. Add to group. Oh, no. So, Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, All right. Um, you know, um, it's, you know, we're really we got excited to work with James. Mean yeah, Gene. Yeah, really. Me, and in this corner, we have Mean Gene from Aficionado. Oh, oh. What's going on, my friend? <laughs> <laughs> Not too much, Matt. How you doing? <laughs> nice. I got, I got it all set up now, so you guys look like you're. Yeah. Well, look like you're battling, but you're not because you're buddies. So that's not that's not the same thing. Usually, oh, it's a battle. Wow, Usually, it's some sort of a battle going down. But uh, <laughs> it's good to have you guys both on the air because. Uh, then uh, now we have a big majority of the. You guys are all doing the. Who's doing the breeding? Me and Gene, or everybody, or how's, how's it's, it It's uh, both of us. Nice, and you guys are pretty yeah. much the 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 heart of the whole deal, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. Like kind of Gene. You know, it's kind of like you can kind of treat it like music. You know, Gene lays his tracks, and then I kind of you know mix my own tracks, and then you know we'll kind of put them on you know as an album, which is kind of like. A release and then everybody yeah, else re- and, and then everyone else remixes it and then some guys get glory and they get 50 grand a show and you're like wait a minute that guy's getting way too much i made all those yeah. beats i made <laughs> yeah. all those beats i made all those beats right anyway no that's exactly yeah. how i it's exactly how i break it down for everybody as a breeder because i'm always like hey you know i know so many breeders who are really awesome breeders but they're terrible growers and i know guys who are great at doing both and i know guys who can just like you know pick out the winners somehow magically but you go to their grow room and it's like the disaster of all disasters you know what i mean but they just have that nose for it or what or whatever and then you have other guys that are just awesome growers 
But every time they try to put out a batch, they're all hermy and weird. And they're like, huh, how do you do that every time? You always yeah. pick out the wrong. Like, <laughs> yeah, you, right? They just don't. You know what I mean? It's like guys have all the equipment and they can't mix. You know, they have no, no they don't have an ear for it. So it's the same thing as music as it is for growing, I think. Because a lot of it is yeah, that's true. tactile and weird. You know what I mean? It's like you, your dad grew it before you, so you really know it well. Or you grew it, the first guy who ever popped the bean. So you've, you know, got 50, 50 rounds under your belt with the same plant so you can outgrow anybody with it or out kind of see the next round or something you know yeah exactly like if you have a certain gene you know if you have like certain selections or genes and you know they you know they vibe with you more than the other strains vibe with you, you know i think that's like a big factor sure you know like uh you know a bubble is really big for a lot of people but that's just one strain i kind of really never got along with you know i've always had a tough time with it but um, did, did you tell you know, matt just, have, you, have you, know, you have you told matt Berger that have you told him direct have you told him your strain and yeah. i would we kind of battle because I can get you to I can get you to, you and Matt together and you guys can uh, <laughs> figure out what, what it is. It's flame. I like the smoke. I like platinum bubble smoke. It's just like when I've grown it over the years. It's yeah. Just, you me and her did a vibe. You know, as much as like say like the chem or like the you know or the sours or the, you know or the old school you know packies and Afghanis that are you know sitting up in Mendo. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean that's the thing is sometimes you get plants that are like like uh, you know easy to grow for some people and or bulletproof plants but then they kind of lose their luster they're harder to i mean i feel like the plants that are the hardest to maintain are the ones that are uh always the ones that are the best you know what i mean like fuck it's always the the viniest one or the one that the branches break the easiest because it's 20 years old or something like that some cut or something like that, that that's as those tend to be the ones that are always like, oh, you know, they're so special, but they're also a pain, yeah. pain in the ass. You know? I heard tissue culture might fix, fix some of that problem, you know, with some of those burnt out cuts. It can. It can. It's one of those things, though. It's like, I'm, I guess I should do a show about it because, you know, I meet people who th- throw it around like it's just nothing. Like, oh, yeah, tissue culture. Do that. Do that. I'm like, oh, show me. Like, somebody show me a fucking place that's actually doing it right. Because if they did, I'd be so stoked because I'd be giving them all my shit and say, <laughs> clean it. hey, can you clean this up? Can you clean that up? Because, I mean, that is the ultimate sort of silver bullet is you, you, you tissue culture it. And then all of a sudden it has no viruses. It has no infections. It has no mold problems. It has none of it. And, okay, none of that. Penis. That, and that's cool. But at the same time, I have been to places that people are telling me that they're doing tissue culture. And then when I get to the nitty gritty of it all, they're like, yeah, well, never really went past this heard, stage. And I'm like, what? Well, that's not, it doesn't help us out. You know what I mean? It's like, I have to see the plants. I heard it depends on the strain and it depends like how people are approaching it. Cause Frenchie and I know people that are up in uh, Washington that are doing really good, that are doing a really good job with it. They had this OG that was really burnt out, just putting out the three leaves, like a duck's foot. And yeah. then they tissue cultured it. And when it was growing, they started throwing five, six, seven, you know, huh. leaf blades and, you know, the inner, you know, the, the, the nodes were, you know, more similar to that of a seedling than it was of, like, an old clone. Right. You know, it wasn't, like, lanky and stretchy. It grew right. more stocky, but it had the same nose. So huh. I thought that was interesting. So, uh, you yeah. know, there probably needs to be a lot more research done in that market. For sure. No, and I, and I know it's going to happen yeah. at one point. And that's the thing that's crazy is that, uh, you know, it's such a normal thing in other industries. That's why I think people just throw it around like it's already happening. Like, like um, recently with... Uh, with uh, uh, Hunter S. Thompson, his his ex wife or whatever, or his wife or yeah. wi- widow, was saying that she was going to work with this Canadian company with his with his old stash that he had kept at the house, and they were going to bring back these strains. And I was like, wait a minute, so you're going to bring back strains from an old stash? Okay, of seeds, you know, what I mean, seeds. That would, all they had to say was the word seeds, but then they clarified and said, no, not from seed, from like a pa- like an old hash. They're going to take some hash, DNA sequence it, and then they're going to up in Canada because they're really good at it. They're going to uh, make some. See, I'm like that is just bullshit. You know what I mean, it's like 100 bullshit. Yeah, yeah. I was like, what are you doing? This is Jurassic Park. You I, know? Exactly, yeah, that's like, Jurassic Park. Some, yeah, no, and that and that's somebody you know. And the, but the thing is, they just threw it out there like it was just normal. You know what I mean? And I thought, and everybody who read it who was had half a brain yeah, no big deal. was like that everybody else was just like you know like people were like oh yeah they're doing that and i was like no you have to read that because that makes no sense and if it is that it doesn't and then they literally clarified it and said not from seed from the old mater- dna material because they can do that in canada and i'm like well i'm sorry they can't you know what I mean? no way there's just no way so yeah can you yeah, no, no, you can't. <laughs> but there is yeah, a there, there is a sort of in between way, which is pretty cool. Is um, you know how when when you're making clones, 
and you get the first callus tissue at the at the base you can take those and slice them off very thin and it's like a, a cell stem or, uh, and it will just basically then grow in a petri dish from that to a plant pretty easily and i can see that being way more successful and a little less time consuming you know I me mean? because that's the biggest problem with tissue cultures it's like you got to get things from a to b to c to d and they take months and then when they yeah fight, the, they, the they, right they, timing and the and the right amount you know the, the right amount of cut where you cut it at for sure well on top of that you're also uh you're also uh talking about sterile conditions which every stoner thinks they have and they don't you know what i mean like how many times people try to grow mushrooms and they get to a certain stage and then they're like yeah it all went bad you know it's like yeah of course yeah. it did look at where you're yeah. trying to do it you know what i mean and other people could probably pull it off because they have they, you know they have a better understanding of it and they can do it in a small area and make it work but for for most people the sterile method goes a long way man it's like you know that's why they use laminar flow hood for a reason in their culture and the mycelium exactly you know, exactly just, you know well, speaking of yeah, which, just, just speaking of which, yeah. how, how is your growing? How what is your what is your preferred growing technique? You guys, is it all organic outdoor, or is sort of greenhouse organic, or you guys dabble in all styles? Or Gene's got a pretty interesting method, man. You still there, Gene? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I do I do everything organic because I, I get a lot I get get a lot better results that way. And uh, you know, I've I've uh, I've dabbled I've been based you know most of everything i've ever done i've always been organic i've dabbled in chemicals whereas a lot of people do chemicals and dabble in organics but i've noticed that uh when you mess around trying to grow stuff and it's not all the way organic you don't really it, it doesn't seem like you produce the same kind of a of a uh it's not as complex of a resin you know it's like mm -hmm. the uh the composition of the resin tends to be like okay well here you got THC and wax and a little bit of terpenes whereas when you when you can really get organic and then you can really get your dirt live and you have true true live soil then all of a sudden it's like okay now you, you, we've already grown this clone for a while but as soon as your soil you get a little bit more diversity of the of the organism living in your soil all of a sudden you're starting to get more terpenes expressing themselves and you get more perfumey and floral sure. and more of these more of these exotic things coming out yeah that's what i really like to do and um i think it, it gets the plant the closest to what it really wants to do so you know um that, that's what that's that's you know what i've been doing lately is trying to get everything as live as possible down there in the roots and then that way you know you're you're getting stuff that is going to stand out Mm -hmm. side by side you're going oh god this stuff's nice this is greasy and perfumey and leaves your hands wet basically with resin even though it's dry weed you know right and now is uh when you say living organic are you also uh amending that at all after the fact or is it all pre pre-thought out like is it all just pre-loaded uh, uh, there, there's lots of ways you can do it i mean there's there's a million different ways to do it and they all work as long as you avoid the things like there's a lot of things to do right and there's only a few things to do wrong so as long as you don't, you, everything's not too hot and it's not too full of a ridiculous amount of nitrogen and yeah. you're not using things that are too salty. Like I was doing uh, for years, you know, I, I've always liked to use chicken manure. And I just realized over the last maybe three, five years that when you get chicken manure compost, it's got a lot of urea salts in it, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. a lot of salt. So, yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's salting up your soil, even though you're going, oh, it's organic, I'm using manure. It's like, yeah, you're using manure, but you'd be better off maybe using horse manure right. where all the, all the urine's not mixed with the manure because all of a sudden you have all these salts that wouldn't be um, in, in your, in, you know, whatever you're using, whatever substrate you're using. So, sure. Um, yeah, that's, that's like the big thing is to actually be conscious, like, oh, is it just because it doesn't come from a laboratory doesn't mean that it's going to, it's really going to nurture life. You know, you still don't want to salt up with, um, with, uh, natural organic, uh, animal based salts too. That'll screw your stuff up too. So, right. um, a lot of, a, a lot of micronutrients. I mean, the, the real thing is you're, you're trying to feed as many different kind of microorganisms in your soil as you can. So you really want to, I used to do these soil mixes and people would go, well, why are you adding these three things? They all are basically only there for calcium and you're putting all of them there. It's like, yeah, but the, but this one has these other little micronutrients and this one has these micronutrients. And 
when you get when you get that variation going, then you're going to have a lot more stuff uh, living in your dirt because you're given you're given food to a lot more things. So instead of yeah. having ten or fifteen microorganisms living in your soil, you're getting it up there to where you have thousands of them. You know, right, so, right, and everything doesn't eat the same thing. And end of the day, uh, it's it like I think people ignore the idea. It's it's interesting too how they're opposite too. Like indoor, you have hydro on salt, rock wool. And you get roots, and the plants grow, and some people don't see the difference. But when you have something that's a combination of a healthy rhizosphere, and there's all this symbiosis going on between everything, and you get like the, you know, the roots are taken care of because the microorganisms have already processed everything that you've, you know, put in there before, or or that that is broken down from something else, <laughs> and. Uh, it's interesting because what I notice is, you know, a healthy rhizosphere means you don't have to use any pesticides. You don't have to, like, the plants are healthy enough. They just fight anything off. Whereas if you have the opposite where you have uh, all salt-based, you kind of have to, like, pre-treat everything just on the fact that it's going to get fucked. You know what I mean? Because the plants have no... Yeah, it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like the, it's like a human pet on all on all carbohydrates and protein. Yeah, you know you're not you're not getting any live vitamins from fruit and vegetables. You know your body's full of microorganisms too. Well, yeah, like, it's you have to look at human health and 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 like your gut flora. Yep. And you can you can go okay. Well, so if this is good for for us, it's probably good for plants. It's like plants' roots are a lot like our guts, you know. Sure, sure, and everything starts in the gut. So I mean, realistically, if your plants are I not healthy, vomit my compost. if they're not healthy in their gut, let's say by consuming whatever you're giving them, then they just go off the rails. You know what I mean? That's how <laughs> things go. And uh, it is interesting too because when you think about that too, like I have friends who, you know eat the worst food and they go out, you know, they just do everything wrong. But at the same time, they don't necessarily look ridiculously unhealthy, but they're also young enough to be able to process it all and whatever. But at the end of the day, if we could see internally what was going on, they're fucked. You know what I mean? Because at the same time, they're not getting, they're, they're not getting any life form going on there. And I like, you know, yeah. and I have a four year old kid. So when I, I or five year old now, but I'm like real conscious about what I give them. And I'm like, damn, this kid's eating a lot of, blueberries and hemp seeds you know what i mean or whatever we're going along the way but we give him the best we can of everything and he's always eating these superfoods you know and like he'll eat more superfoods in a day than most people eat in a month just because he's eating a smoothie and then he's eating this and then he's eating that you know what i mean and you're just thinking like all right build the brain build the brain build the brain you know what i mean give it the right fat yeah. and all that and the same with the plants is like all it is is like you got babies one day and then all of a sudden, a week later, they're fucking adolescent. And then two weeks later, they're fucking getting into Going their middle pump. age. And then all of a sudden, they're old. You know what I mean? It doesn't last very long. But you got to, like, maintain them almost like you would if you were in charge of a kid all the way through his death. You know what I mean? Like, here you are, kid. I got to feed you. Now I got to do this. And people don't think that. They think they buy clones. They just grab them off the street, whatever. You know what I mean? So if you start thinking of it like, yeah. hu like we are, you know, human-wise, it's like, you know, random kids every time coming in you're not going to be able to make them all good they're all fucked up right out of the gate you know what i mean like one kid's got spider mites great he's just spreading them to the other fucks you know what i mean and, uh, <laughs> and he's fucking spread them to all the other guys you know what i mean and you're like fucking kid where'd he come from you know what i mean it's just like <laughs> And it was like that when yeah, we you're eating that kid pizza at McDonald's and he's got mites, powdery mildew. He's right. got botrytis. He's shitty grades in his class. <laughs> it's horrible. Yeah, short attention span. Kids fucked, right? But uh, in general, yeah. in general, uh, it, it, it's kind of like that. And I always tell people, you know, if you think about it, when you go on holiday and you set your timers, and then fucking somebody doesn't do something right, and you come home and you're like, fuck, everything's. Like, and then you bring it back, it's like you kind of just like knocked about four pegs out of that fucking hundred that you could have had, you know what I mean? And then maybe even more, maybe eight pegs. And then you just keep losing those pegs. Yeah. You don't regain them very often. You might regain a half a peg for every 10 you lose, you know what I mean? Just on time frame. And then every time you get your report card at the end and you're like, yep, I'm 78, just like normal, you know what I mean? Yep. I'm like, didn't really so good. Or, or you get an 85, or you might even get a 90 if you're doing good. Hardly ever get a hundred, you know, because. Most people aren't that yeah. good. So, yeah. And that's what's really going on when you're growing a plant, too, is, you know, you're starting with, with the genetic potential of the plant being 100. Exactly. Or depending on 
the strain, how much you like it, you go, oh, well, even this thing, the best I've ever seen, it's still only an 88 or a 93 or whatever, you know? Yeah, exactly. But you got something that you really like, and then you're, you're going to grow it, and really what's happening is you're trying to keep it as close to those original points, you know, to go, okay, it's a 93-point strain, let's see if we can get it to a 92 or a 93, and the plant's doing its own thing. You just got to basically make sure that you're allowing it to – do what it wants to do, you know, and people are thinking, oh, I'm such a great grower, I'm pushing the plant, I'm doing all this stuff, and if you step out of the way, your plant just does so much better if you can just keep it, you know, having healthy roots and not over underwatering, cutting it at the right time, that potential, so that's like, yep. that's the biggest trick, it's like, you know, it's not about what you do, it's just about not ruining the genetics of the plant, you know. Exactly, it's like being a shepherd and don't let it get hit by a car. That's like pretty good. It's all you gotta yeah. do. It's all you gotta do. Don't get like thing get hit by a car yeah. or eaten by a wolf, dude. That's all you gotta do. And if it's you just can not dis- cold at night, <laughs> and you're like, ah, I don't know. I got drunk, left them out in the cold, and they got all kind of cold. They're a little slow today, <laughs> you know. Whatever. <laughs> a couple of them died. Whatever. You're like you're the worst shepherd ever. You know. What I mean, that, that's all we really are in this long, big fucking span. So, um, you guys are working on some good new stuff, I believe. Or I'm, I'm just say that because you guys, I must be working on something good, right? You yeah, know? I mean, yeah, we're always working on you know developing iron. new strains. What's uh, what's the yeah. latest uh, from either side that's that seems to be the the next future that we might be looking for? G yeah, coming out with the Freeborn Selections line um, pretty soon. You know, he's, I, I know he's gonna you know tell you guys about you know a lot of his own stash that he's been working over the years. Um, some of the things, you know, fishing auto wise is kind of, you know, going back through our lines and seeing, you know, kind of preserving the genetic diversity of it, you know, while, you know, in, in, in one place and then being able to bottleneck it into like new directions, you know, that we haven't seen before. And uh, we're kind of, you know, trying to really sift through old Malawis, um, really try to, That's nice. you know, sift through high THCV strains. And, you know, we're working with one of our buddies, uh, Josh, who owns uh, uh, Royal Key Organic stuff in Arcata is, you know, has a really good luck with sourcing, you know, really fire cuts. And, mm-hmm. you know, he, he sourced this cut from, you know, it actually came from Equilibrium Genetics, and it was this, uh, you know, uh, Malawi LA Confidential. And it was just the, the particular cut he had was a freak. Mm-hmm. And so it really sparked our interest to kind of sift through Malawis and yeah. kind of, you know, go on, the, you know, and then, you know, try to, you know, pair them with, you know, something that might be complementary, you know, distant as right. far as it being a relative or, you know, or, you know, or it being kind of, you know, you know, similar, you know, to, um, to each strain. So, you know, we're really going through all the old, you know, land races and right. we're going to try to rework our OG lines. And, you know, we're always experimenting with, you know, seeing how, you know, like this year, particularly, I'm, I'm kind of focused on how far can I push fuel with yeah. some of the strongest fuel, you know, um, strains, champs that I have in the stable and how far can I push you know, the fruit level, you know, because, you know, people like, you know, whoever's putting out that forbidden fruit that's on the market right now, and, you know, people like Gene with the cherry lime and things that have a definitive nose like Purple Kush or Urkel, you know, I want to see kind of going through those lines and see, you know, what else can be brought out because they're so, they're, they're so unique and, and standalone on their own that, yeah. you know, it's kind of like, you know, that's why I guess that's what every breeder is trying to do. We just want to see something that, that pushes the limits. Yeah. Now it's funny you're talking about Malawi because uh, recently, kind of like you know you you know how you find things out about own, your your own stuff. Sometimes it might take ten twenty years to figure it out because you're like, oh yeah. okay, that makes sense. Because um, recently we were talking about sage with people and the original people who kind of brought it to Big Sur we're calling it chamba first right and so then it was like oh, oh. the chambas the chambas <laughs> yes my, and it was my like boys uh, up in- uh. yeah and so then it was like okay so now this is now narrowing it down for us because at first we were thinking uh we knew african and then we didn't know where though you know what i mean so we were calling it and then other people were calling it affy which fucked everybody up because you know one guy was saying yeah it's a- <laughs> it's affy you know what i mean and then you're like affy all right cool and then you go on and you're like it didn't taste like affy at all or ever smell anything like any oh you mean oh no it's african you know and it's like well what kind you know and now but malawi really narrows it down because uh it's a much smaller region obviously and then on top of that super unique flavors and that's kind of like now i understand from the sage side of the corral of what everything was like okay now i know what i'm looking for i'm going for that you know that spicy uniqueness 
Yeah, that kind of like anise kind of lemon tone. Sure. Almost. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's... like that was cool because I was talking to James with Caesar now on the phone. He was mentioning that you guys had roots down in Big Sur where the whole Big Sur Holy Weed family came from. Yeah. You know, there, there wasn't any one strain. It was just whatever the homies were growing that year. Yeah. That was fire. And, you know, the people that are up in Laytonville that link with those crowd, what I found that was really interesting is a lot of those old timers have like really old crosses that have Malawi in it. Right. You know, and there's like old timers that are up on Fire Rock. It's like, yeah, man, back in the 70s, you know, we were blowing up the old Paki and the old Dalalis and yeah, and that, know, and so that was and that was actually they said it was like the shit that was a little too strong for everybody, you know. And it was like, really, that's what we want. Everybody, well, there you go. Yeah. Where, where is it? What is it? What? Is it? Ah. But yeah, yeah. And, for, yeah. And, and I mean, I guess the name Chamba more or less just means good weed. It's kind of like chronic or or kind bud. What is the chocolate chum? Yeah, the yeah, chocolate up here, is weird. Up here, uh, my buddy's dad. Uh, He's had it, oh God, since definitely since the early '80s, and uh, he calls it Chamba Wamba, and right. he's bred it to be, you know, acclimated to the area. So it's it's uh, like the early side that's more like an indica, right. um, hmm. kind of sweet, not as much of the cerebral stuff left to it. But man, right. those plants are incredible, and the mold resistance, the mildew resistance. There's a lot of good genes in there to borrow for other stuff, you know, but. Um, it's definitely been around, yeah, and and uh, I was kind of surprised when I th- I always thought he just made up the name, you know. I didn't realize he's like, no, it's African, you know. <laughs> you right. like, oh, he just made up the name, Sounds... and then I, I looked, I looked something up one time, and I saw it next to it, and I went, oh, Chamba, okay, yeah. so yeah, Chamba Wamba really sounds is. hella made up. Yeah. Sounds like a hella made up African yeah, yeah. name, like yeah, you know, <laughs> Chamba so, Wamba, like, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so, yeah, so yeah, racist yeah. sounding. Yeah. Right. Right. It was really, I can already see the logo. It's very racist. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> bone and so nose. how did you know? How did you know it was bone and nose? Um, so land race wise, you guys are, are still sourcing stuff or you have people bring, just bringing you stuff randomly or how, how you been, how you been doing? Yeah, with that? Got a, we got a few people that have been kind of bringing us land races. You know, some of the, one of the ones I was really excited about getting this year was um, the Bhutanese from Bhutan. I just um, smoked some Bhutanese weed. I just smoked some Bhutanese the other day from Nick Vitus. It was uh, he did a Bhutanese OG cross, and oh, you're killing it! And he fucking knocked out the OG. You don't even taste OG. It's like all the other flavors, and it's oh. it's interesting because it's very like it's it it isn't. It's funny. He, he described it when he handed it to me. He said, "Tastes terrible, smells terrible, fucks you up." And I was like, "All right, give it to me. <laughs> it sounds good. Let me try it." And then I was, and then I was, and then I was like, "It doesn't yeah, taste that Meister. bad." I was like, "It doesn't taste that bad," and it definitely gets me high. And it definitely does not taste like there's any OG in there at all. So he, I don't know. Maybe he's got a good dominant something. He had a friend who, because uh, that's like a real Himalayan sort of. I feel like that's the only place left with good shit is going to be in that region of the world, just because the rest of the places have been. Bomb to it's fuck the most or... isolated country aside from North Korea. Sure. It's like if you look at the countries, the only countries on the planet that don't allow international extradition to the U.S. Yeah. is actually there's three. There's Iran, North Korea, and Bhutan. Yep. And Bhutan actually limits the amount of visas for tourists that come into the country each yeah, year. So yeah, yeah, the fact right. that my boy was able to bring them back and, and hook me up, huh. you know, I'm going to definitely pop them and do, like, do an open pollination, and then from there I'll kind of sift through them. Well, you know, I definitely want to, you know, maintain the genetic diversity because the low traffic area was what I was really excited about. Like, oh wow, low traffic. You know, there's probably a lot, there's probably a good amount of, you know, gene preservation within their lines. You know, whether it's a land race or if it was something that was bred by, you know, some of the villages because some of the villages do, you know, do select plants and you know keep their own seed stock. I'll send you. So, a, I'll send you. Know, I'll send you a couple of photos from what he sent to me. And then uh, when you do grow it out, see if they have any resemblance because it looks really it, – it definitely – you can tell right out of the gate that it's got that small calyx stacked thing going on, which we like uh, as far as for, you know, like, okay, that's something that wouldn't doesn't look like a big fat indica and giant calyxes. No, it's, it's super small calyxes yeah. and real stacked, and it's got that spicy uh, – Oh, and then right away, I, when I smelled it, and this is what everyone busts my balls because they always say, I say that everything smells like sage. But, but anything with a certain type of smell really does smell like sage because it has that, like, okay, it's going through that layer of it. You know what I mean? And with that stuff, I smelled it. And the first thing I was like, kind of smells a little like sage. Weird. <laughs> kind of like a real. Yeah, I, I know. It's like that velvety herb, herbal scent. Yeah, it was kind really. Of, kind of like a, a little more. Real you, sage leaves. 
Well, no. this this one's got a little more like eucalyptus background to it or something like that, though, too. Like a little ting to it where you're just like, ding, okay, that's something. Like, you know, when you – like the problem is that there's a lot of haze, hazes, they, they call them, but they're not haze, you know what I mean? They're not, yeah, but they're not real hazes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then those – a lot of times are like wannabe sages. You know what I mean? I'm like, okay, so somewhere yeah. it's like the breaking point where they kind of go, because literally sage is not considered a true haze like when it comes to like a haze one or, or Neville's haze or any of those kind of haze varieties. It's still kind of that weird, you know, scent, that weird flavor that they kind of can't put their finger on, which is what I want. I always want the shit you can't put your finger on. You know, that's the, that's the thing, you know? Or the thing yeah, that's... that's yeah. Yeah. That kind of spice thing going that like the old school old school pre Amsterdam haze if you can ever find it right right exactly. it's like a it's got like a like a, even some of the some of the the broadleafs like the Hindu Kush mm-hmm. and some of the Takis and stuff they have it where you you smell it we used to call it reggae weed because we'd be at reggae on the river <laughs> they had a lot of they had a, a lot of that up in Humboldt we'd be in reggae reggae on the river in the parking lot yeah and it'd be we'd be like three hundred yards away and we'd go. Ooh, there's that spiciness, you know. And, yeah, that's, and, that's, um, and that's exactly when we smoked the sage. Everybody would always say that they'd be like, "Come and come across the room from the." I would tell people it's like the festival weed is the best shit. People come from like across the other side, from yeah. the, the other side of the camp. They'd be like, we've, yeah. "We've been over there talking about it. What are you guys smoking?" Like they'd be like trying to like figure it out from across the room, you know, and shit. So it's Durban yeah. poison. No, and over here they call it, and that's the funny thing is over here, like, there's a Durban poison cut in Colorado with, that they call a Durban poison, and I'm, I'm like, anybody who knows anything about Durban knows that that has not got anything to do with Durban. That's like a Jack Herrer fucking uh, mm. cut, which somebody, which actually produced some weight and has that spicy thing that people think is haze, you know what I mean? And I think the Jack kind of confused a lot of people where that, that's, that, when that first came out, I worked for Sensi, that was in 1995, I believe, or something like that. And they showed me on a whiteboard. It's an 11-way hybrid, right? You know, so if you make an 11-way hybrid with anything, it's fucking all over the fucking place. Like, <laughs> my, there's no way you can make an 11-way hybrid stick. You know, in my opinion, and, and do it in less than t- five, ten years or something like that. You know what I mean? Because it's like all of a sudden you're you're just bringing way too much to the table. And what's weird is when I see a lot of new growers and breeders produce stuff, they tend to put Jack into the mix. And it's almost like putting oh. it's like putting like putting black into any any color you want to do and just being like oh yeah. Yeah. so I should kill that jack hair male that's in the basement <laughs> it just knocked all the fla- <laughs> it knocked all the flavors and it knocked all the everything away and that's all that's left is that smell which we all know I, and I like, call that one the, the Amster wreck the Amster that's the Amster wreck that's that. That's that fake Amsterdam haze that smells kind of like train wreck, and once you get it in yeah. your lines, it just does not go away, dude. Yeah. Everything smells like <laughs> you're right, like uh-huh. watered, watered down. Uh, you know, like I don't know. People call it lemon. It doesn't smell lemony to me. It just no. smells like watered down train wreck Amsterdam haze. You know? Yeah, you're I never liked those. You got it. No, you got it 100. percent And that's and that's the one that kind of like pisses me off because. People think they got something new, and they go like, "Come here, come here, try this. Smell this. Check this out." And I'll be like, "It's got like Jack in it somewhere." And they're like, "Oh, how, did, how does he know?" And it's like, <laughs> it's like, it's like, well, of course I know, because he fucked everything up. It's like putting Ritterallis in your weed and like wondering why you get fucking shit that auto flowers. You know what I mean? You're like, because you got yeah. it. In the, it's in your life. I just can't keep it veggie. Yeah, my mom's keep flower, and you're like, because do you ever any Ritterallis? And nope. And you're like. You start looking and you're like, hey, dude, you got this. Oh, wow. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's like, kind of... it's not like cardboard and peanut butter, right? <laughs> right. No, no and you I... get that, that rude you know? It's just like, <laughs> you know, it's just a smell that just doesn't, it's just not appealing. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Um, so, as far as you guys t- working together, like, uh, d- did you get, do you guys, who, who, who supplies males, who supplies females? Do you guys just kind of, it all depends on the strain or how's it working with that? Yeah, I mean, sometimes there's like a there's like a cool one where it's like, oh, you got that clone, that's really killer. I got this strain that's actually almost the same. We can do a breed of that, and it's gonna be really, it's gonna be a really nice true breeding F1, you know, because they're already so close to each other that this will be a great donor for that. Or like we did the Black Lime Reserve. I had my Black Lime, um, my Black Lime, which is basically like my modern version of it, which has the Hollywood Pure Kush OG cut in it. Uh-huh. And so his chem that he had, which was like Chem 4, Stardog, Chem 4, Chem 4, whatever, you know, it was uh, it was uh, like he gave me a jar of the 
flowers and I looked at it and I was like, look, you can drop my lime in there. And it's, it's like, looks like the same weed, but it smells different. So, uh-huh. you know, I saw the way the plants from his grew and mine, and they both were kind of consistent populations with a morphology and stuff. And I was like, Hey, this will be a cool one. You know, it'll be like a, uh, it'll, it'll be like a good, a good one where some of them will be like this, some will be like that, but they'll all be uh, the equal in quality. You know? So he gave me some of his, his winter pollen that he already had, and I put it on a bunch of stuff I had actually, and the lime was just kind of the sensible one. And uh, when we grew them out, you know, they're killer. They killer vigor. Everyone who did them outside was like, yeah, our garden was a lot bigger than usual. And nice. the weed is, was all super high end. And so, you know, some of them go like that. I got a cool one um, that I'm going to do uh, in the future as an efficient auto release where I took the the uh the pinot noir that he had that um that frenchie liked so much as a hash plant mm-hmm. and i crossed it with one of my old strains which i call grape soda skunk even though there's a grape skunk and there's a grape soda yeah. out there i've been calling it that since like 2003 and it's just the name you know it's been in i i you know and it's a name that i that i stick with for it, even though it's like one off from these other names i discovered since Right. But I had that, and I had crossed it with with my uh, with my uh, PKOG cut, and I went ahead and crossed that with the Pinot, and then I ran out. I ran that out, and I made a bunch of different F2s. So I have all these plants full of all these F2 seeds, and I really want to do a back cross uh, to the Pinot cut to make a, to make a, a a Pinot Noir back cross, and the 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 stuff that a, I added a, to a it fino, really a, a fino, a fino was, noir? A fino <laughs> noir? Fino, fino <laughs> noir. That's what we'll get. We're going to get some fino noirs for sure. Um, but, yeah, that's one that I really I really want to get together. And um, so, you know, in that case, it'll be like, all right, I put in something about some of my old school stuff. That's actually one of those, like you said, when you have an 11 way, I think it's like it's an 8 or 9. I have to write it down. I really think, but. It's like an eight or nine um, way hybrid, and then I bred it now to like before I did that. I think I was at the F6 when I crossed it with the uh, PK, mm-hmm. and so um, that's one of those ones that I'm stoked on because it was tons of different things, and I picked the one that really stood out out of them, and I was able to breed towards that using a few kind of little tricky markers. And then, um, you know, like stem color and just leaf shape. And so I was able to get it really consistent. It's fully true breeding. And then um, it, at one point, one of the things I used in it was incredible, but it had a hint of that same, that same kind of um, Amsterdam haze terps that you're, that you're talking about, except the plant was incredible. You know, there's two different dimensions of that. There's the ones that are washed out right. and they're like, and they're like crappy Jack and then there's the other ones crappy that jack. are like, well, crappy jack. That it sounds like a cereal. Crappy, crappy jack. jack. That's for my kids. new release. It's going to be crap, crappy jack. No. Crappy jack, non, uh, non-fortified. For your yeah, kid. Right. Totally unfortified. So, <laughs> yes, but, but you know, you've got those two different, there, there's some strains that have that in there, but they have so much more depth that they're still incredible strains. And it's like the ones that are bad kind of give those kind of a terp profile. It gives it a bad name because when you smell the really good ones, they're like old school hawaiian cross hindu kush you sure. know lemon lime spearmint you're like ooh, this is incredible right and then you smell the ones. that ones are no good but it was in there and i bred it to the point where it's completely gone you can grow out hundreds of these things now they're all purple they all have purple stems they all smell like great chocolate skunk and pop. they're really loud like grape jelly or like fierce grape gatorade kind of a grape with all that other stuff in it yeah and so that one with something that was already like kind of a red wine chocolate, like the Pinot Noir that uh, uh, Subcool used that to make uh, his cuvee. Uh-huh. Um, so that's you get like those ones they call the cherry cordial or the different ones out of that that are really deep chocolatey, you know, great berry fruit. Uh-huh. That's in there. So that's that's the one that um, you know I'm excited. I want to get that one really worked out to. Um, put that out, you know, as an efficient auto release. Gotcha. And then uh, what do you think? So you think that people are finally getting out of their funk of OG and figured out that there's other flavors and things mm-hmm. like the sweet ones are working again. And cause that's the thing is I noticed that the fruity plants, 
for the longest time, people were just like, no fruit. No fruit. You know, you're like, Jesus yeah. Christ, what's wrong with you people? Fruits were a lower ticket <laughs> for a few years, weren't yeah. they? Yeah, like, yeah. like no fruit. I need sours, and then I'll pay uh, 12 for fruit. Yeah, like, exactly. Oh, man. I know. Now it's like, what? you look at the trends now, everybody <laughs> wants that really sharp fruit, that kind of tangy, mm. that uh-huh. almost Skittle kind of nose, that cherry lime nose, that Urkel nose. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I, 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 love to watch, big... I, I love to watch the transition because it's kind of like watching just the slow, uh, you know, from... Well, the thing is, that for years it was kind of like, uh, you know, obviously California demand just kind of threw out whatever they fucking wanted to. Now you got to grow what people want, or they go out of business, and people have like changed up their thing. And when they think they got it on point, all of a sudden everybody changes their fucking tune. Like, no, nah, don't like that no more. We're, <laughs> we're totally into orangey shit again. We're like orangey shit. Like, <laughs> no, I just killed yeah. all my orangey shit. I have no orangey shit left. No, no one wants, <laughs> no one wants the orange candy out of the bag. You know what I mean? That's the one. That's the starburst you set aside. You know? Yeah, and then but yeah, and then now it's like you know, but but it's weird because one guy will hit it with. You know, a whole new flavor that's actually, it's all, most of the time, it's just like, oh, that's an old, it's something that comes back in a circle, you know what I mean? We, sure. we, uh, we mature as a, as a consumer over the years, and I think also the extracts is what really fucking changes the game, because when you give, make hashy shit into extracts, it tastes kind of funky and weird, like, people don't like it. Right. They like yeah. that fruity, like, oh, okay, now this tastes great, you know what I mean? Like, when you make them with extracts with, uh things that have a lot of afghan in them and stuff it's like it's great for real hash but it's not really great for for uh making shit oil and stuff i believe you know a lot of times you end up with that's, stuff that's in- what i was gonna say I yeah agree. i think that the biggest factor of, of the of the transition going from skunky fuely earthy gnarly stuff has been really the um the oils you know because when you make oils from sour diesel you go, hey, it's just oil. Ooh, it's high THC, but there's not a lot to it. You smoke yeah. it in a joint, it tastes incredible. It's deep right. and rich. Yeah. You hit it as a oil, and you go, eh, it's strong, but you don't smell it and wonder what people are burning. You know? Yeah, complexities are gone a little bit from there. And also, um, what's interesting is what you're saying with sours is like what I notice with sours is it makes really oily hash of any kind. It doesn't matter if you're making bubble hash, water hash, fucking dry sieve hash. Uh, oil from a closed loop system whatever it is it makes a very particularly a very particularly sticky oil and uh but it's not the greatest when it when you try to make uh like you don't make it doesn't make hash that sticks like 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 uh, people like frenchy wouldn't like it because i think because it doesn't make true hash it makes this weird in between fall apart kind of oil shit that's just so <laughs> strong but yet so non doesn't turn into a block you know what i mean like some like back in the day when we made hash we didn't even pre-water hash we were just doing dry sieve and some weed just didn't work you know what i mean it's like nope this plant doesn't work <laughs> throw it away you know what i mean that plant works we like work so you had to really be selective on the, the varieties of what you actually do now people make shit from everything they can and some stuff again it still works and works and it doesn't um yeah we've seen that with selecting seed varieties because like for the best you know since we've been doing seeds, we've always made our seeds on our production plants. And so, you know, every plant's a seed, so it's a different phenol. And what we found with, like, spinning hash with Frenchie over the past five years was, you know, you really got to just select a clone that's good for extracts, that's good for hash, and just stick with it. Because you can't really, it's hard to bank on the reliability of all these phenols are going to make their hash. Yeah. Unless you're gene. You know, because, like, gene, every, everything a gene you know, usually turns out really wonderful because he's good at selecting what he, you know, what he knows how to work with best. But, you know, when we're talking, you know, other people that grow out black lime, cherry private stock, chem dogs, you know, from different seeds on different farms, even on my farm, you know, we see different results that some, some hash presses, yeah. some doesn't, you know, so you know, especially with, with Frenchie's craft, it's like, it has to be pressed. It has to be that homogenous glob for it to sell. Mm-hmm. But some of the most fire hash she's ever made, didn't press but it was super terpy it was just kind of like sandy uh, resin og's exactly that's exactly what it is og produces that sandy resin which is like across the board i think yellowy a little bit brighter yellow than even your normal resin like oh that's really bright yeah but it doesn't really ever want to stick and stay into something nice and then smoke it like a week later and it's kind of a little bit rough on your throat and you're like i don't know so so so, yeah just certain strains just do what they do and that's just the way it is and i think i think as a society, we're we're growing up 
quickly, but we're still babies in this and really in this industry when it comes, to, especially when it comes to extracts, because, um, you know, like n- people can make extracts. Nobody's turning it into anything that lasts a long time. Like real hash lasts fucking hundred, you know, it lasts you 50 years. If exactly. You stick it, but it has a self-preserving quality to it. But we strip all those self-preserving exactly. qualities away and we kind of make this weird shit which you got to smoke within a few months or else it turns to like i don't want to smoke it you know what i mean i just i pull it out of my drawer and go, oh look here's a whole bunch of uh, what's that you know what i mean it's just like things just look will look weird now because it didn't have that that hash thing whereas if i pull out some dry sieve hash from like 10 years ago i'm like holy shit shit's still good you know what i mean it's like still good look at that boom still bubbles or whatever like collecting comics, um, though, man. you guys do a dry sieve at all you guys have any experience with it or do you like to do it Dude, besides Frenchie, man, Gene's been known for making hash up north, man. Nice. So, um, yeah, yeah I, I, I started playing with that, I think, like, uh, 94. Um, yeah, it's about when I, I think, I... like, maybe, like, 92, the first time I saw somebody do it, and they said, oh, I'm going to make Keith, and mm-hmm. took a took pantyhose and put it over a coffee can with a, exactly. with a rubber band exactly. on a mirror, yeah. you know, like a carnival mirror, a Budweiser mirror or something, and a little trailer, and was like, oh, I'm going to make this stuff, you know? It's funny. And I was like, oh, cool, wow, that's crazy looking. And, you know, I was a kid. I was just like, that's crazy. It's all yellow. Like, yeah. I still remember how good it was. It was funny because you know, obviously the weed was incredible because my impression of it wasn't that it was light green or, you know, it was just that it was just bright, fluorescent yellow, you know? And I was like, wow, that's that's crazy. And then I think maybe... You know, we made it for a little while, and we were just kind of doing stuff like that. And then we we somebody told us, hey, you know, you get a you get like a you get like a a, a silk screen like a one ten, right. and on a frame from a t shirt place, and yep. then you know you put your stuff on it, and you make sure that when you break it, it doesn't make powder. It's got to be slightly moist, and then you move it around a little bit, and you tap the screen, and you don't break the weed. You just try to kind of kind of make stuff kind of fall off, do it when it's cold. And then a guy from, um, from uh, Lebanon wound up showing me, I think when I was like 14, this is like 94, a guy from Lebanon came to my buddy's house and we were at this party and my friend goes, hey, you know, this guy, he's showing us this, he's from Lebanon, like where they make hash and stuff. He's going to show us how to press hash. And what he showed us how to do was to take it, fold it in some plastic and then wrap it in moist newspaper, and then you wrap that in foil, and you put it on like a cast iron skillet or the top of a wood stove until sure. it puffs up. You yeah. can tell that the steam is kind of there, and you got to make sure you fold the plastic right so the steam doesn't get in the hash. Yep. And then you roll it with a rolling pin or a bottle or something, and all of a sudden we were like, whoa, we're making this crazy black hash. It looks like melted poly pipe or something. It's just like, yep. you know, <laughs> red looking stuff. And some would come out blonde, and some would come out darker, but... Um, you yeah. know, like after a while it, we were making like, you know, back then we're being really careful. What we do is we'd take the whole thing and we'd run it without breaking any of the weed. Mm-hmm. And so we would just get all heads and it would be straight full melt. And then we would take the same bag and we'd run it again and we'd get something a little bit less high quality. Then we'd run it again. And, you know, so, um, then after a while we started, go, we started going, Oh, let's keep the keep. And then we'd take it and we'd put it on top of the screen and after a while, we realized, like, you know, you can, put the, you can put the hash on top of the screen and put a border around the screen so it won't leave the screen. And then you can take, like, a Sonicare toothbrush, mm-hmm. and you put it to the screen at the corner, and all the hash jumps, and basically everything falls through except for the, the little bit of uh, contaminant, you know. And then we were getting some really nice stuff. And then, you know, we started making water hash, and we kind of just stopped doing the dry stuff. But... Yeah, um, I think dry. I think, know, dry we really... I think dry has a renaissance going to happen again because people have so much material again. Where they're like, okay, well, because the thing is, what I don't like about water hash is if you live anywhere that's got any humidity issues, and you don't fucking dry your hash out good, you end up with fucked up hash. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's like, yep. Yeah, it gets funky and it'll get kind of foul, and people don't use really clean water, and then people don't rinse the hash while it's still in the bag. They just make uh, it, yeah. and rinse it out. It's like, no, you gotta you got to wash out everything out of that hat. Like, if I, when I make water hash, I'll put it in the bottom of the bag, and I'll sit there, and I'll just spray it with, 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 with you know, super ice-cold water mm-hmm. for a long time, you know, until I'm like, okay, until the water coming out of the bottom of the bag, I can taste it, and mm-hmm. I can't taste any water hash anymore. Right. So it's really clean, you know? And um, I think uh, the deal with, with um, 
the dry, and, you know, they talk about this in, like, uh, I think Clark talks about it in the Hashish book. Uh, the head on a trichome, it actually has these little cysts and nodules and weird little things on them, and they, some of them have different kinds of terpenes, and there's different stuff going on, and when you make the, when you make the bubble hash, you lose all this stuff in the water. Mm-hmm. And with the water, and when you do it on a screen dry, you get this stuff. So you can have it side by side and go, okay, here's the one we made dry, mm-hmm. and here's the one we made from water hash. And that dry hash is going to be a little bit more complex, and it also has this little punch, like it kind of it hits you in the chest harder than when you make the bubble hash. And I don't know what what, what the difference is, but I can always tell. You know, like that was always we used to take them just like Keith Bong hits back in the day. We'd always be like, dude, that's so different than than water hash. Yeah, it's true. No, a little bit. And then also, uh, you know, the the for me, what I loved is that I could take stuff that was made uh, dry sieve and carry it around with me forever, have it around, and like always, it would always go back to exactly where it was where. Water hash was kind of like it was great while I smoked it. Those couple days after I made it, or you know after it dried up or whatever, and then and then I tried to give it to somebody, and then I asked them a week later, like, so, "What'd you think about that?" And they're like, "Oh, dude, it was all fucking fell apart. It was swag." And I was like, "What? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? It was yeah. killer. Dude. It was like full melt. You should have fucking been on it." And they were like, "Didn't pay attention, and because they couldn't get it off the plastic or some stupid." You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. I went through. So my whole thing back in the day was I was making lots of killer hash. And I figured out that I could run it through a laminator, and I, I just made, like, laminated uh, pouches and fucking figured that all out. But I was stupid. Well, not stupid. I just was un, unknown to me. I should have fucking wrapped them all in parchment, parchment. paper, and yeah. then I would have had rosin, and I would have been a genius. <laughs> Instead, I'm just on a fucking podcast talking about weed. Like, man, I could have been the rosin guy. You know what I mean? But I was making hash at around the same exact time, 93, exa- doing exactly the same technique as you, except... What I learned, which was even easy, which actually I think worked better in the sense of it was like no brainer was I, you do a, a layer around it of uh, dry and then you do a layer around it of wet. This is all newspaper after you've wrapped it in cellophane and made a little pouch. And then you do another layer of dry after that. And so inside the two dry layers was a wet layer and that created that little like puff that you were talking about. And then you didn't have to like put the tinfoil on it, which I don't know. Tin, tinfoil for me was always a no go. I was like, I don't know, I'm hitting up tinfoil. <laughs> but, but the the, sure. pap- the paper would actually, on the outside, would, would just barely brown up, you know what I mean? And then on the inside would puff up. And again, like, yeah, we're, I, w- I was around 94, living in Amsterdam, 93, and I had, like, shitloads of weed and shitloads of time. <laughs> and I was 24 <laughs> years old, and I was just like, dude, I don't know how many people in the world are doing this, so probably you were one of them. You were like one of the 150 of us or whatever. There was not many of us, you know what I mean, who who were actually thinking like, same thing. I had pantyhose first over a fucking picture frame that I made some hash, and then I was like, I'll go down to this guy, and he's a t-shirt guy, and got the t-shirt, came home, was like, this is good. Then I put little springs in the corner of my thing so I could like bounce it a little bit, you know? And I was bouncing, (laughs) so I was bouncing my screen, and then I had it in front of a television, and I had Oprah and fucking Jerry Springer on because it was 93, 94. And that was the coolest thing you could watch in Amsterdam, right? It was Jerry or whatever. So I had like, <laughs> first I had one TV and I was watching it really close because I just was like right, right in front of it. And all the fucking dust was like collecting on the television, you know? And I was tested it and I thought it was going to be the best fucking smoke in the world. And I put it in the pipe and I was like, oh, that's terrible. Like, that tastes terrible. Whatever that is, that's horrible, right? <laughs> then I realized, oh, the contaminants are all going towards the screen mag- with the magnet of the screen, you know? So I was, yeah. call- I was calling it Oprah Hash at the time because <laughs> I, I, figured, I figured it would make more money. I was like, yeah, Oprah Hash, bro. And they're like, what's Oprah Hash? I was like, don't even worry about it, bro. It's like, <laughs> Oprah Tech. It's Oprah Tech. You don't even want to know. <laughs> And then I was like, put three TVs around the screen, and then you really get it going. And then I was like, yeah, it was funny. We, we just had this whole uh, same same mindset, I think, at the time. So. Wow. <laughs> Oprah Tech. That's and then, uh, <laughs> yeah, the Oprah Tech's hot, man. He, I don't know. Tell, Don't let Cuban find out, because yeah, he's right. going to fucking kill it with that. You know? Nobody wants to watch Figured Oprah. Tech, huh? It won't be Oprah Tech. It'll be some other new thing. It'll be like Workaholics Tech or whatever. Whatever your favorite show now I think if you do three, it's better. And you watch three shows at once because we're all ADD out, every single one of us. Yeah. We, we know, we all know we are. We all know we want to watch 
TV, listen to music, and do some do something else at the same time, and not pay attention to either of the two things we're doing. So. <laughs> right. Probably all of us. Um, so you guys, uh, I, I think James said something about Leo coming up with an idea for a, sh- a contest, for an after show contest, where people had to write in some crazy answer to some crazy question. Is that true, or you just made, he made that up? Yeah, that's true. We're what? gonna give away a, <laughs> yes. um, a new pack of the uh, white cherry truffle. Uh, someone that could the first person that could write to info at seedsherenow.com that could tell us what event the Versailles OG completely sold at what year and what day wow man I would never know see, there you go great question yeah, yeah. I have yeah. no idea every time I see your booth it's always filled with people it looks like it's sold out some so. will know like we had a guy come by one time and he like he like literally like was really upset like he had like <laughs> he had a temper tantrum and he's like fuck He's like yelling at his friends. He's like, I told you we should have got here earlier. This is fucking bullshit. No, I, missed, I missed out. Like, dude drove across the few states. <laughs> I was like, wow. Oh, oh, I almost felt kind of bad because I gave, I, I would have gave him a pack because he, he drove the whole way. Right. You know, I really respect people that go out of their way, but I had given away everything else to like all the homies that stopped by before the show, before the real flood starts. Sure. But. Well, that's uh, yeah. that's part well part for the course. I mean, that's the thing about your stuff is it's very exclusive. Very limited. I mean, and that's what, I guess, keeps the, uh, the mystique going. And you guys are good at mystique. You're good at packaging, too. I have to say you guys have uh, – Leo isn't responsible. I know I know. Mean Gene's not responsible for packaging, right, at all. It's all that's all Leo. No, no, no. That's all, that's all Leo. <laughs> that's, that's all, all Leo. Yeah. The, whole, the whole fishing into the brand, that's all. Yeah, yeah. No, Leo. no, exactly. That's what I assumed. And, uh, but I have to say, you guys take a next level. But, uh, Thanks, you know, and I, think that, and I think that's part of the deal is – People understand what they're getting because the difference is, I mean, with seeds, it's interesting because it's like you're giving somebody this like living thing, which can turn into a 10 foot fucking plant with five pounds of weed on it. And, you know, they got their hundred bucks worth or 50 bucks worth or whatever it was. But you guys actually also give a lot to charity, too. Right. I mean, that kind of part of your deal, like like with some of your high price seeds. And so you giveaways or whatever you guys have done a few giveaways is that like or charity events. Is that kind of. Yeah, we did that this last year um, for Mandelbrot, who passed away. He was, the, you know, the founder of um, of Emerald Mountain Seeds, and he was the creator of the Truth and the Royal. And um, we did kind of like a victory lap for him this year. You know, we released his oil spill that, you know, him and I worked on a few years ago. And then I finished up breeding, you know, what we talked about was where the Royal should go. And, um, you know, he, he was, you know, he was a visionary breeder as far as, you know, being one of the first in the Emerald Triangle to like really break down and start putting out, you know, gassy strains. And there wasn't a lot of fuel on the market in seed form, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and and Ross, you know, he's also known as Ross Truth, you know, Ross was, you know, really known for not really putting out clones. So any clone that he touched was, was, um, was really rare. So, you know, we wanted to remember him and, you know, we don't want, you know, the industry, you know, since it's growing and, it's moving in a different direction and we're getting out of this whole old school kind of image of, you know, kind of being outlaws and, you know, all the people that built this industry in the first place, I just wanted to kind of preserve his memory, you know, so people could, you know, remember kind of like, you know, who were one of the first people in modern times to kind of really be on the forefront of, you know, breeding boutique cannabis, you know, up in Humboldt and down in Mendo. So, you know, what we're doing also this weekend is, you know, unfortunately, you know, Mandelbrot passed two years, you know, passed away two years ago. But his son, he left, you know, behind a, you know, a really amazing kid, Nicasio, and he's only four years old, and he just suffered from a stroke. So Gene's been doing some crazy stuff on Instagram, um, putting up really rare packs of seeds, and the whole community's been coming together, and, you know, everybody from Josh, D, Archive, anybody, you know, you can name them, you know, have donated packs of seeds, and, you know, these seeds are going for, you know, a really, really crazy amounts, but it's all going, to, you know, to a really good cause to make sure that, you know, the industry is coming together and taking care of, you know, someone's child that's given a lot to the industry. And that was, you know, a really a main figurehead in Mendo for a long time. Well, that's killer. That's, that's good Good to hear. And then, uh, you know, yeah, I was going to say before, it's like, you know, if anybody's going to be able to get people to pay big money for seeds, it's you guys, that's for sure. Because you, know, you, you, know, you, already, you already broke the mold. I think as far as people being able to like stand in line and wait for seeds that other people are like, what this is fucking expensive, bro. And I was like, you know, I, one of the things is when I first worked at Sensi Seeds back in 90, 91, I guess it was 1991, <clears throat> like part of the deal was I walked into the shop, 
said all oh, these shit is really expensive walked out and then about a, two weeks later someone told me they were looking for somebody to to run the place and i went back in there and with a different i you know different sort of mindset and try to figure it all out and then after working there for like about six months <clears throat> i was like when i explained to somebody why they cost so much money they totally got it you know what i mean they're like oh okay well that makes sense and that was even just you know with without 20 years behind it like now i've carried around genetics and fucking from continent to continent and try to maintain lines and things and it's more work than anybody understands and then you know like you you get like people griping you over three bucks a seat or fucking ten bucks a seat and then you guys are like fucking asking ten times that amount and people are standing in line so you get like the there's such a range I think in the industry that now you know it's it's good to have guys like you to set the mark at the high bar and then you know there's always going to be people selling cheap seeds and putting them out by quantity and then you're going to be like god damn it I got the fucking yeah I feel you I, I got the fucking <laughs> you know the fucking same old Hey, Jack Harrow again, Jesus Christ. Because <laughs> you know there's going to be a lot of those and quantities at cheap prices. Because that's the thing. It's a seed market. I tell people, I'm like, well, you know, I'm happy that I can grow old and, and have seeds in my back, in my little briefcase or whatever and survive, I hope, until I'm dead, basically. You know what I mean? And not like knowing that the market's going to be like you can still buy seeds on quantity for 100 bucks a pound probably because it'll be – people just nuts out there you know because you know how it is once they start growing acres of high thc weed in some place they're going to end up with seeds on just because they're retarded you know what i mean not, not, for, <laughs> yeah. not, for, not for any yeah. other reason not right. for any other <laughs> not for any other reason than they're just fucking idiots and they didn't pull their mails and they have well i got 20 acres of fucking seed now you're like wow that's great what are you gonna do with it you know nothing like we would all look at each other like we don't we don't want your seed but they're gonna want to turn it into something just like any industry you know what i mean so they'll Hemp oil. Flop them on the market as, you know, and they might even be, who knows, it might be an OG something that some idiot made 10,000 clones of and put them in a the field and didn't realize they were thinking it was hemp. And, you know, I mean, it, it, there's going to be yeah. stories on stories on stories in the next couple of years, you know, and there's going to be a lot of seeds out there. So creating the mark like you guys did sort of sets the bar for other people. But at the same time, uh, are you scared about like other people coming in and, <laughs> Just wrecking what you guys already got, or you guys have a sort of exit plan, or what's your, what's your what's your I mean, long term sort of I mean, plan? I kind of approach it. You know, we're really not. I've never looked at myself in the cannabis business. We're just in the quality business. You know, if we were in the business of it, we'd be killing it on seeds. We'd be selling way more seeds than we make currently. But it's like, hey man, we want to we want to focus solely on quality and keep producing what we've always produced because it's got us to where we're at. So. You know, we'll see how the market develops and how things mature. But I think, you know, for us, the best way to do, you know, go about things is kind of stick to kind of what we've been doing and, you know, expand to other markets and just kind of feel it out. But, you know, over overproducing and producing seeds, you know, just for a profit really isn't our thing because, you know, that could hurt. You know, our reputation got us to the place. You know, everybody, every batch has bad seeds. You know, you get, you know, weird things happening with different phenotypes. So we try our hardest to make sure that, everything we put in the market is what we feel at the time is the best representation of our work that year. So we only release sure. seeds once a year. You know, we don't, you know, we don't do multiple releases and very rarely we'll re-release a strain because we only release it once. Because, you know, if you look at, you know, my library, even Jackson's library, you see, or Dean's library, you see, you know, a ton of strains. And so we're just trying to put out the best we have right now so we can continue to work on the other lines we have and, uh, are we scared people are going to steal our work? We'll see. You know, I really hope that the open sourcing of, of, of the genetic, you know, galaxy and all the genetic maps is really going to keep people from being able to patent genetics. But, you know, it's a really interesting time because we're seeing a lot of people coming in the industry. Everybody's all of a sudden a seed company. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of, it's, you know, it was hard back in the day to kind of differentiate ourselves because the only reason we really felt, you know, right in charging the people prices we paid because, I was paying 50 to $80 a seed, you know, from the old school outdoor growers anyway, because, you know, and that happens to be most of our customers, outdoor growers, people that know that, you know, when I have this seed, I'm going to make, you know, I'm going to, if you can't make $500 off of one seed that turns into a seed, no, you shouldn't be growing. 
Yeah. You know, so that's most of our customers that grow are, are just for outdoor production that are expecting. And they should be know, making five. They should be making five Gs off every one almost. Like, so if they're if they're half a grower, right, they get five pounds. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Even at eight hundred dollars yeah, a pound, not, even at eight hundred dollars a pound, like this year when I heard lots yeah. of people getting fucking swamped. So we, got, we just have a lot of respect. You know, we have clients that are hobby growers, but you know, most of them are are really serious professional full termers and. You know, we really vibe with everybody that grows it, but it's the outdoor growers that we really live for because, you know, it's, 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 it's a pain in the ass to just gamble every year. You don't know when the rains are coming in. You know, to start off with clones, if you're not depping, if you're doing full term, then, you know, you need that immune system. You need that, you, know, you need that full term exposure to be able to cultivate, cultivate something that's going to be marketable because we're not just growing weed anymore. It's like, hey, it's weed, take it. Yeah. You know, it has to be, it has to be something that, really resonates with the consumer or something Ooh, resonates like that resonates yeah. oh, oh. oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, little, it's all the thing we just talk for a while and then little gems pop up every so often and be like resonates yeah, Ten, right. trademark that right now resonates.com <laughs> resonates.com <Okay. laughs> hashtag resonates.com <laughs> hashtag dot com so um you, what's your next show what's the next show you guys are at on your own or yeah, we're, we're really thinking about i mean if we do talus it's most it's mostly to just do, you know post up with frenchy yeah. you know kind of you know we'll have a little bit of seeds maybe or i mean but it's mostly just to kind of like meet people and and to support frenchy's hash because he you know he's turning all our flowers and all our materials and what he does into his craft so i mean usually it's only been kind of the emerald cup because we've been going to a lot of you know uh, events in the past but we just don't make enough stock to be able to sustain you know, those sales throughout the year because, you know, we, we don't want you, we, a lot of the people that come to the fishing out have been coming back year after year. And so we don't want to, we don't want to, uh, you know, alienate the people that help us get to where we are by, you know, putting more seeds out than we should be and, you know, changing the dynamic because it's, it's some people really feel like they're getting a competitive edge growing certain cultivars. Gotcha. Gotcha. No, yeah, so, yeah. And, I mean, it's great that you guys are concentrating on the outdoor area because, that's, I guess, I think that's more than most rewarding. Ever since I started selling seeds, I was always most happy when people came back with, like, results from outdoors in Cali or wherever they were growing outdoors because that, that taught me the most about certain strains that I was growing because I was in Amsterdam growing out of my fucking warehouses, little spaces or, you know, reconverted fucking movie theaters or boats or whatever, whatever space I was in yeah. at, that, at that given moment. And so a lot of times, and I tell people this too, I'm like, you know, I think the reason why Holland did really well with selling seeds is that most of those seeds were so happy when they got to a place like California, you know, they were like, oh yeah, way better, <laughs> way better than that fucking, yeah. than that fucking place we were born at. That was terrible. You know what I mean? That was in Amsterdam. It was cold. <laughs> place was fucking terrible. And then, but I, I wonder if that helps with, Helps or hurts? I mean, like, if you guys are producing seeds in the best, most beautiful environment ever, and then you make those seeds and you grow them in fucking, like, Ohio and some guy's house and fucking, he's, you know, it, does that, a, do you think that's a, helps at all in the long term, or do you think it hurts to, to have them come from a great place to a shitty place or from a shitty place to a great place? I think any it feedback is good feedback. Was that, was that? Uh, it, it, what, what's kind of interesting where we're at is, uh, we're like almost really in Humboldt, which uh, northern Mendo, Humboldt, when you're not far away from the coast, the weather here is not that different than when you're in like eastern Washington. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You're more wet. So, there. yeah, I mean, eastern Washington probably has better weather than my house uh-huh. because it, it, it's, you know, where, where I'm breeding stuff, it's like if it's not hardy, and also, you know, a lot of my stuff, I give it to people to do closer to the coast and when you get up here in this in this coastal range it's pretty rough on plants you know yeah so it's like that does really well here or in humble like when people breed stuff and they're in humble and i know they're they're, you know they're not super far inland um it's like it changes really quick here the difference between three or five miles here is the difference between being really arid and everything being scrub and everything being tan oak and Right. Live oak and, and we're in just hot and 115 degrees all summer long and, you know, no fog. Where I'm at, it's like I do get the fog and I do get, um, you can go, you can drive 45 minutes from where I'm at south and the, the, all the trees will already have leaves and flowers on them and I'll still be waiting for a month to get spring, you know. So it, it is kind of harsh here. So our seeds, I think, as far as I've seen, I mean, I've given stuff to people in uh, Wisconsin 
and Michigan, and they've done them outside, and they did great for them. You know, they're like, wow, these did better than all the stuff that we that we got from other banks. So, um, so you, you know, it's kind of there's a little advantage because we are. People think of this as being the best place to grow, and I'm like, dude, go grow and go grow east of Santa Cruz, you know, or go grow even out um, in Lake County or eastern Oregon and you know it's just so much the weather's so much more forgiving you know here we get we get slammed if it's if it's getting towards the end of October here it's probably rainy every day you know so it's right. kind of rough right so you guys are um are you guys pr- producing indoor at all seed or are you just doing indoor for like starts or do you guys do I mean obviously you have to do some indoor growing too right you know just doing strictly outdoor yeah just to just to just to an extent kind of run stuff out see you know if it if it is indoor friendly mm-hmm. um you can't really give people seeds to the market you can't really put out something that can't be grown indoor i tend to outsource stuff to buddies and go hey try these out run out a bunch of them and you know keep keep what you get and you know if you get something good go ahead and keep it and if you get something really great go ahead and send it back to me and maybe i'll work with it or whatever but um you know like me i don't i i, I don't do a lot of um a lot of stuff inside, but like right now I have a breeding going that I'm doing, uh, I'm doing for, for my little solo line, uh, freeborn selections, which is a male that I've already run probably maybe four or five crosses that did really well from the male. And it's a black line male. And then I'm putting that on like 25 different cuts of my own stuff. And those, that whole thing is going is being done indoor and when they're done then they'll all be grown out indoor to see what's indoor friendly because if you give somebody something and it and it's not indoor friendly it's probably not going to really be light depth friendly because light depths are almost more stressful sometimes than indoors because they get hot and you know um people get a lot of light leaks in their depths and stuff so Sure. Uh, yeah, most you know they got sure get humidity problems, and they don't understand that. Like, yeah, you know when you can seal it up, it's gonna get really fucking humid. You're like, oh, <laughs> yeah. didn't think about that. You, it, know, you, might, you might catch some really cold nights too. People's heaters fail, and they're doing winter crops and all that kind of stuff. So it's got to be, you know, indoors is a good way to go. Hey, is this thing really? Is this thing really sturdy? Is it not going to basically totally go all intersex on me if I go ahead and put it in and? You know, and, and then that way, too, I know for myself, because it's no fun to be growing. You know, when I do when I do plants for myself, I'm usually going to be growing a really big plant. And all of a sudden, you have that thing flip on you when it's under a little bit of stress. It's a pain in the ass, you know, so. Yeah, 100%. Um, um, you, guys, it gives, it you, guys, too. you guys fucking around with LEDs at all? Uh, no, I haven't tried them. To back in the day. I'm just because of the heat factor, you know. It seems like it'd be cool to cut down on the on the heat but yeah, um one of our one of our uh, chat room guys chief, uh, chief packable was really adamant about figuring out what the fuck led he wants to grow with because he's got two grand burning a hole in his pocket and he's like i want to buy i want an led right. now nobody's answering my fucking <laughs> questions and i'm like all right spectrum king spectrum king's not yeah, bad yeah spectrum but... king was was I, I that was like the nicest one i've seen like when i was you know, doing selections indoors and, you know, collecting a lot of my male pollen indoors. And back in the days, I was getting panels custom made in China with, you know, certain Cree and Bridge Lux chipsets. And, like, as far as I saw, you know, when I was really into LEDs back in the day, um, it was the, uh, the, 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 the Spectrum Kings are some of the best I've seen so far. I haven't tried. Yeah, I haven't tried them either. But the, um, the only thing that we had, so we had a sponsor for like a month, right? But then they dropped. So Next Light was making some pretty damn good uh, lights. The thing is that they were looking at Spectrum King and telling me, like, oh, that's like our like last year's technology. And the thing is about those particular lights that they had were they were too deep. You know what I mean? So you got to be careful that when they try to make them way too deep and they're not really made for that, it's better to have a – the whole thing about LEDs is like lower wattage and bigger coverage. I mean, that that's kind of the overall picture. The minute you try to turn it into like a cannonball of fucking light coming out of the thing – it gets way too fucking shallow and weird, and like it's like they made it so hot that it was well not even hot heat wise, hot light wise, that your shit was bleached out. Like your plants became white on the top. You know, and I was like, well, that's a little bit too much, guys. You guys are overdoing it. But uh, yeah, I haven't personally tried Spectrum King, but according to everybody, it seems like in this room it's the way. What's that noise? What that the hell was, was that? Noise? That was interesting. Everybody here? Everybody still here? I'm here. 
Okay. Cool. I couldn't hear the noise. I don't know. I heard a blue. Yeah, something. Yeah, we lost blipped. somebody. We lost somebody? No. Well, yeah. Still- all right, anyway, we're down at the end of the show. You guys are lucky. You guys are lucky. Uh, <laughs> it don't matter if you disappear. We'll still hype you up and talk about you until, until the show's over in about ten, two minutes, whatever. What, um, you guys are going to uh, be, obviously, like I said, at Ch- are you think it'll be at Chalice probably? What, what, is there doing, they're doing a, what's the next Chalice? Because no, they just did their – did you guys go to the one at the New Year's? Did you guys do the New Year's Chalice thing? Uh, that was what happy place I think. Yeah, did you guys uh, do that? I, I, I didn't make it. I don't make it to very many shows. You know, I'm usually working. I go to, I go to Emerald Cup, um, and sometimes I'll catch one of the High Times. I might go to the High Times one in June in Santa Rosa because that's easy for me to do. But um, sure. going down and, and like the ones in San Bernardino for me, that's just like it, you know, I, it's it's a little bit too much work to go to the party. You know. Right. Well, hopefully we'll get you over here in Colorado at some point. If you do come through, you're going to tell us ahead of the game, so we'll get you on the show live, because that'd be nice. And either way, I'm sure we're going to, you know, line up at some show somewhere, and I'll get you back on the show either the, either live wherever we're at or just on here like this, because it's always nice to talk to you guys. And uh, what's your website? Give us a shout out for your website or whatever the best place to get your gear is at. Besides Seats Here Now, of course, because we know Seats Here Now. Uh, Seats Here Now, I think, is <laughs> probably the only place really as far as online to get them. See, and, there you uh, go. That's what I wanted to hear. I was just testing you, bro. I was making sure you were on <laughs> yeah, we uh, Moonlight. Get them from com because best price. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I wanted to give a – I wanted to just to, 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 to plug my uh, – my auction we're doing for Mandelbrot's son, Nicasio. That's on my Instagram. It's uh, Mean Gene from Mendocino. Nice. Uh, no underscores or anything. And um, we got a bunch of stuff on there. It's definitely, you know, it's charity bidding. People are bidding crazy amounts of money. But anybody who really wants to uh, kick in money and get some, some cool stuff in the process, like, uh, you know, Bodhi oh. put in a bunch of stuff. He doesn't really have. Did you not eat? Get rid of him. Uh, yeah. Hello. Oh, uh, man. Technical uh, difficulty. See, he pulled you up. He did. He did what I told him not to do in the beginning, right. which is pull you up and drop fucking Leo. Had the group. What a guy. Yeah. Anyway, we were in the middle of him dropping our fucking website too. So how you doing, bro? He's gonna call back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys talking to me? I was talking to you. Yeah. yeah. We pulled up as we pulled you up. We dropped fucking Leo in the combination. So it was great. Great. Great combination. But. <laughs> How are you doing, Mr. Mean Gene? Oh, this is Leo. Oh, this is Leo. Sorry, uh-huh. I, I thought we had the other the one. Switcheroo. Oh, you guys are so double switch. Huh? Oh yeah, I guess we <laughs> lost Gene. Sorry. Yeah, that was the other double. That's why we didn't know. Yeah, we did the lose double switcheroo. I screwed up. Oh man. All right. Well, we got Leo on the phone. So he was given a website. We don't know what. It, now it's over. Oh man, he's not calling back. So how are? Uh, uh, how do you think the show went? I think it was pretty good. You guys are, you guys are entertaining. Mr. Leo. Well, yeah, it's always good time, you know, good time sitting with you guys and chatting. You know, you guys, you guys got so much experience in the game, so you know, it's, it's rare you get to find people like that. Yeah, I know it's great. I, I find it great to watch this whole industry develop because it's like I predicted it a few years ago, and I kind of believed it but then i forgot about it and then i went back and i was like holy fuck it's happening exactly what i said was gonna happen it's gonna be like fucking two thousand little companies but out of those things you're gonna find some cream's gonna rise just because there's gonna be you know a hundred little shitheads trying to fucking remix whatever we've given them and there's gonna be like one or two kids his dad with a grower and gives them something special and they got some laotian weed that just fucking cripples everybody and you know makes their left leg go numb or something stupid and you're like oh my god this is the weed of all weed bro it makes your left leg go numb like, we just need something more positive as as weed guys to like guarantee that if you can get anything that carries through now add to group hey, add, add to group there you go look at that watch this hey, watch this here we go oh, oh me and Gene back, back in the house Sorry. I'm back. I'm back. Sorry. We Dave, dropped you Dave, mid. Dave from Golden Coast just messaged me. He's like, oh, they're sad. You got to call back. I said, all right. All right. <laughs> yeah, you were like mid sentence. We didn't make. Really, we, we, yeah. we, we, we yeah. yeah. How far did I go? Did you guys get the. Uh, did you guys get my Instagram for the auction? Some, no, no. You should start over. It was like bro. halfway in, so just redo that. All right. All right. All right. It's, uh, it's uh, Mean Gene from Mendocino with no underscores or any, any of that crazy stuff. And um, it's the it's just the Instagram. It's my regular my regular feed, and I'm putting up um, all kinds of stuff from from all over the place. Somebody put in uh, 
an ounce of seeds that was sour diesel cross black lime reserve. I just wow. tossed that up. That's nice. You know, so there's there's a lot of cool stuff. There's wow. some old um, posies on there. My buddy Bamboo put up some some land grace uh, heirloom Afghanis that his dad brought back. Those have already been one, but there's been a lot of really cool stuff. You Ooh, know, so, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, some, yeah, we need like yeah, we need yeah. like the we need like the kids to go through the True, dad's like, stash show or something like that. Like, <laughs> go through dad's stash. He's not looking right dance. now. I know, yeah. I know I know you're 40 years old right now, but just, just, just do it anyway. Sounds like a contest. <laughs> your dad's 65 and you're 40, but it's cool. Just do it. <laughs> He's gonna have the good shit because that's literally where all the good stuff is is locked up right now in these little refrigerators and buried in yards and behind people's sheds. Yeah. And, you know, there's, there's got some stuff in the fridges, man. It's, it's there's some stuff's gonna make a comeback, you know. A hundred percent, yeah. I, I mean, you know, and the thing is, like, there was a reason why people went nuts for Colombians and, you know, for fucking Panama and fucking gold yeah. and things, things that we never like. We don't even know because we're like, ah, that profile's gone in our world, you know. what I mean, but for the, I mean, luckily yeah. there's a few people alive <laughs> still who can zone us in on the right stuff. But either way, there's some good shit in there, you know. What I mean, so we got. Oh, sure. Yeah, I learned a lot of those, like, uh, those old profiles, you know, we'd have something that would be a hybrid, and it would be all wild, because there was all this stuff mixed in, and one would come out a certain way, and one of my buddy's dads or something, or uncles would be like, ooh, that's that old Oaxacan, or oh, right. that's the Burmese, and we kind of learned Oaxacan. the profiles a little bit of how stuff came out, and without people who have seen it firsthand, yep. you don't really know, you know, some of these seeds that people have, you know, back in the old days, they might have they might have passed the seeds, and right then, Afghani was hot. So they said, "Yeah, it's pure Afghani," and it's really like Korean Nepalese or something. You know, <laughs> right. you don't it's absolutely don't no. really know, yeah. yeah, what it is unless you have some some kind of way to to really uh, know from experience. This is what it's like, you know. So yeah, and, and the problem is a lot of those regions like Afghan and stuff like that. They don't even smoke the weed from there. This, if you go to the place and ask some guy in Afghanistan, like, is this Afghan? They'd be like, I have no fucking dude. Why are you smoking the weed? Are you crazy? You got to smoke the hash. You'd be like, no, I'm smoking the flowers. And you'd be like, no, you're crazy. You know what I mean? Like, those places don't even smoke yeah. flowers. So the only way to know is the guy who brought them back and grew them out and smoked them back in the 80s or whatever and was like, yeah, that's yeah. That's, that's the flavor. You know, and that, and that is the thing that's funny is there's a lot of, um, you know, people who've been traveling some – Every single weed region is always like a war region too. If you notice, it's like except for Jamaica, they haven't had a war in Jamaica right. for a I while. But, say, but, yeah. but that's all like you know. But for the most part, Afghanistan and all these places, and you know, like even in like the Himalayas, it's like it's not necessarily at war with us, but they've always had strife, and that's why that Bhutanese sounds really interesting to anybody because Bhutan is like a place that's really hard to get in, and get out of, and in Nepal. We'll yeah, say, it was. It was a pain in the ass for Burmese seeds last time I went to Thailand. Oh, 100%, because you have to do that. That's the same, yeah, same I had style. Ride a, it was gnarly. I was on a fucking moped for like two hours. I was uh -huh. going through the mountains north of Chiang Mai, past Chiang Rai. Yep. And then I hit up um, one of the small um, Burmese Burmese villages. And, um, and it, was a re it was really shady trying to get some seeds. And, you, you know, there's like some, you know, Burmese Rasta, you know, Rasta guy. You know, Asian guy with dreads leading me through the jungle, and it was it was real trippy. But you know, those seeds that we got, man, they were they weren't easy to find, and you know, we can't even be sure that they were from Burma. But the guy was, you know, the whole, whole the crew that was working the area was was from Burma. And it was right by, it was right on the border. Yeah, of so, course. But you can't really get. And much. We grew they, don't, they, don't, they don't let you get much further anyway. They're kind of like, yeah, no, go in, and you kind of dance around a little bit and get the fuck back. <laughs> That's about it. That's we, all you give me. We still have the seeds. We have a clone, and it just started flowering when we planted it. Like when we planted it in like June, it didn't start flowering till till end of October, or early November. Wow. So she was long winded. Yeah. Well, that's good. She, at least at least it seems seems original. I mean, it seems more. Good thing it wasn't like a super fast, and you'd be like, that don't seem right. You know, you'd be like. All right, so yeah. like, all of a sudden it's a Jack, I mean, it's a Jack Harar. You're like, you motherfuckers. No. You fucked me over, man. <laughs> you fucking me, man. With the Jack, who, the no Jack, man. Oh, yeah, it's Jack Harar. <laughs> that's, that's a really cool one that I got when I was down. Um, I was down getting ready for the Emerald Cup. We were setting up the booth, and my buddy hit me up, and he's um, he's one of these guys who, like, has a house but doesn't live there. He lives everywhere else in the world all the time. He just travels and rubs hash in the Himalayas and 
goes to uh, like you know Goa in India and goes to all these places just nonstop. He just parties and rubs hash and travels and uh, he goes, yeah, I brought you these seeds, you know, from Nepal. And I go, oh, cool. Are they? Do you think they're like they're like old school stuff or what? And he goes, well, here's the story. I went to this place that in English and I still can't figure out where it is. I gotta yeah, I gotta talk to him some more. He goes, it's called Star Valley and it's like this legendary place to go to rub hash in Nepal. And when you get up there, he goes, it takes eight hours on quads to get from from the nearest real town. You have to go on this quad trail all the way up and you get into the mountains and you're in this valley where they're where they grow weed. But if you look up, you're looking at like the mountains next to Mount Everest, you know, he goes, I don't know what it is. It's K1 or some, there's some crazy mountains up there. And, uh, so I go, so basically no one goes there. He goes, oh, yeah, when you get there, man, people look at you like, what, what are you doing? Where would you guys come from, you know? And right. uh, he brought me back maybe 100 seeds of these, of what they call uh, terracola or taracola. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if it's like he doesn't know. It's just what they said. So it was, you know, he, he he's not going to be able to read their writing and translate it. But it was basically this Star Valley terracola and uh, – and it's from just the middle of Nepal. But what I was excited about was it's way up in the mountains where stuff barely grows. Mm-hmm. And so I figure it couldn't be one of these really late, because I have some Nepalese that didn't finish this year till like December 1st, and it's lovely. And I can recognize the smells out of it. Mm-hmm. And it grew like literally 12-foot plants in a two-gallon pot, if you can believe that. I and mean, you fl- could probably go an eight-foot plant six inch you know what i mean it was these these things were the fastest growing i've ever seen they blew away the malawi they blew they were literally three times bigger than a pure swazi or a pure malawi perfect fiber perfect uh, perfect plant to cross to make like the ultimate hemp you know what i mean like that time yeah and they grew straight up and down they didn't want to branch they were really cool but they weren't what i was looking for so he brought me these and he goes yeah man these are there's no way these go long because the winter up there the snow comes so early that if they're not done by October, I don't think they would be growing them. He said they were really nice broadleaf plants. Huh. They had really funky, funky smells to them, and he didn't get to see the flower because of when he was there. But yeah. he was like, "This is what they grow. They pretty much only grow this one." They said it was the special one, mm-hmm. and they let me have this big bag of seeds. And I brought you some, and I'm keeping some in case, you know, I didn't want to lose them on the plane or something. So nice. that was exciting. That like sounds a new good. Thing. <laughs> might wind up, you know, you might be. Might, we might all be growing it soon if it turns out to be something really cool, you know? Totally sure. different. Sure, so, sure. Yeah. And like I said earlier, I think I did the Himalayas and kind of the last little areas that are kind of like left that haven't been like totally stomped on because everybody's, the borders are so weird and everybody's like, eh. It's not that it's like hostile, but it's definitely right. always, always edgy, you know what I mean? So you're not going to like, just like North Korea. Yeah. Like North Korea has probably got some stellar shit too. Just none of us are. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Korea is one of the only places where they got the broadleaf. It's really, really famous. I had a buddy who used to grow in the 80s. They grew in Hawaii, and they do these little covert patches where they'd, like, cut out the grass and in and, and chunks and then walk through and then put, the put like, the sod, the natural sod back into their trail so no one could tell it was there. And he said they had a, they had a Korean back then that was an incredible broadleaf, and it, its hairs were actually turquoise color. Hmm, nice. Yes. That's awesome. Something Which I thought was pretty cool because I've never seen anything like that. You know, I've seen pink, I've seen purple, yeah. I've seen red, mm-hmm. you know, but it was like it had all of the all of the blue from the purple but without any of the red. So it was like these, he said it was like, they were like turquoise sky blue uh, stigmas, you know, which was crazy. So. Yeah, no, that'd be awesome because it's something you would definitely see if it's dominant or recessive and pretty fast. You'd be like, okay, well, that's gone or holy shit catch you know and like every fourth one yeah. or something like that and that would be awesome because uh so we're looking for we're all looking for the weirdo i mean i tell everybody i was like mutations is where it's at you know what i mean if you get a mutant you're like yeah mutant, that's pretty good i got this weird um uh back cross of some sfv back cross that somebody gave me some seeds of and i grew them out and i just i got one of them that throws out like mutant branches you know what i mean where they're like a lester grinspoon branch on a plant where you're just like, okay, well the rest of, and it's the fucking most resiny plant I've ever seen. Like the, the most of the plant, let's say 80% of the plant, give or take 80, maybe 90% is look normal. But then there's just like this freak branch 
which I kind of like. I'm like, yeah, this is the one because then I can fucking monitor it. I can follow it around. You know, be like, you got to fucking. You're a weird fuck. sport. If it turns out too that they all all the weirdos do what you want, then it's a really easy marker to go. Oh, yeah. okay, cool. Go to weirdo to weirdo, and here we go. True breed, double weirdo, know? double weirdo. Double. <laughs> I know, no, exactly. Yeah. and it's um. It's just, uh, to me, like uh, back in the day when I was living in Amsterdam, I, one of the ideas I had, which I never did, but probably should do it at some point, is just to organize all the fucking mutated plants possible that I could get and then do a freak show for people like a freak show. You know what I mean? Like come in and see the, look at this. Look at the plant. Look at this guy. This is the fattest plant you've ever fucking seen right here. Fat, fat leaves, fat everything. Skinny plant, skinny plant. Double plant, double plant. Fucking mutant plant. Got a cousin hanging off of yeah. the plant. You know what I mean? Because in a sense, it's like those those weird ones. At, but that's where all the weir- that's where all the shit fucking the beauty happens right in those mutations. Because all of a sudden, you might get that freak that just produces double sized resin glands or something. You know what I mean? You're yeah, like, that's oh. a- and that's what that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> the double D resin glands. Double D resin. <laughs> like double D resin. <laughs> <laughs> like every gland is just genetic. Looks like it's been fucking chopped and stuffed you know you're like what <laughs> look at them and they got two heads on every gland or something i don't know you're, literally we're gonna get to that point you know what i mean we're just the mutations are what, where it's at Mutant glands. yeah people yeah. find the one you know where the resin doesn't hit that certain size it's just like you know predetermined size like kind of every strain has its its size heads that are the yep. biggest it'll get mm-hmm. but i had like in my in the old in the old um seed that was the first plant I had that I ever labeled the bag of seeds as black lime. It was this old cross and I got it from a dude and uh, some of those plants, when you grow them still coming from that particular size, uh, you get the ones that lean that way. You'll get these plants that have um, you know, like I have some close-ups somewhere of the of the resin and you look and you can't even tell what's going on. You're like, I don't know if it grew ten times as long and it rolled down itself or if it just has massive like 400 micron uh you know heads or what is going on there but the resin is just like there's just nothing like it you know so i'm always still always hunting for that and i've never had the luck to catch one to clone it because it would be like you know it'd be like the the macro shot you know porn gallery forever you'd be like look at that Look at that. You oh know? my God. It's Are so those... big. <laughs> You're like, yeah, dude, dude, how is it happening? <laughs> yeah. Freak out. Yeah. No, but in general, I, yeah, it's like, uh, it's interesting because when I, like in Amsterdam, I had this plant that someone gave me. They're from Oregon and they came through and they're like, gave me a bunch of cuts. And one of the cuts they gave me, like, branches would fall off of this plant. It was really weird. It had that, you know, like the, where the branch met the main stem, it just kind of fall off right there real easily. So it was a pain in the ass, but the also the cool part about it was it grew like a hanging plant, you know what I mean? And I was just like, this is the weirdest plant I've ever had. Like, I put it in a pot, and it would just want to grow out of the pot and kind of, <laughs> like, hang off the pot <laughs> and then Cut hang down. That. And if you, so you couldn't creeper, really... Yeah. It was, like, it was a full creeper. It was like a super full creeper, like, to the point of, like, <laughs> weird, because it would break off in sections really easily, and I'd be like, fuck, it keeps breaking, you know what I mean? It was one of those plants, but... Uh, you know, again, the, that resin on that plant was so weird too, because it was the same deal as like you looked at the resin, and there was like m- different sized resin glands of all different sizes, random size, and it was like, oh, this looks really weird. All about everything about the plant was weird, like it was something just genetic fuck up <laughs> going on there. <laughs> but at the same time, there was something special about it too, because it was got you really high, and it was related to the um, to the snow bud. Actually, it was like a snow bud retard or something i don't know what it was exactly but snow tard snow tard there you go snow tard it was snow tard the, the infamous snow tard <laughs> never to be found again <laughs> <laughs> no, so uh, yeah if uh if anybody wants to get in touch with you besides seats here now is there a sort of direct line to you guys like an info line Whoa. The what? what? <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Who is that? It's like auto-tuned or something. <laughs> <laughs> I was just asking if there's a direct line to any of you guys that, uh, for, for like people who want to get in touch with you guys besides Seeds here now. Yeah, info at Aficionado Ooh, Seeds or hit provocative. us up on Instagram, Aficionado Estate. And um, you're, poor, you're more likely to get a you know faster response from us if you hit us at the uh, info at Aficionado Seeds.com email. Good. That sounds good because uh, I know how it is. You, 
you give somebody a site on a show and then all of a sudden you're like jesus christ do i have to answer these guys <laughs> like fuck yeah. no. hopefully some guys will you have just some... get the craziest request through dm and i'm like man you're really making my mailbox hot right now right they're like so I, try to, I try to encourage yeah. all those to go to the email and not yeah for somewhere where they can just delete our account sure sure no understood um well good nice talking to you guys fine uh for a little bit a little extra we did like an extra 20 minutes because that's how we do around here but uh good to actually get you guys on the line and i'll i'll be linking up with you when i'm in cali at some point and hopefully I'll, I'll, hopefully you guys get to come to colorado because i'd love to see you over here show you what the fuck's Man, going we'd on. love to come and visit yeah there's something when you come down i will i will i'll hit you for sure and i'm just saying if you guys get a chance and there's something going on you just feel free to come through and we'll we'll make a show of it again Right on. Cheers, bro. All right, old Nice talking to you guys, me and Gene, and uh, Leo from Aficionado. Yeah, thanks for being on the show. Thanks right for, on. Thanks, thanks for, for putting out fire. And, uh, oh, also, um, well, no, I guess you guys can jump off. I'm just going to add, add some more to the tape to the fucking show. So you guys jump off and get back to work. I'm sure you got a Much love. busy Friday. Have a good weekend. Peace, guys. All right, peace. Okay, okay so during the show... Uh, I noticed that some of the guys in the chat were talking about the ounce of seeds, blah, blah, blah. Right, yeah. All right, so anybody who uh, sends in the an- first person to send in the answer what an ounce of seeds w- weighs, which I know, obviously. Uh, what? Will, 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 <laughs> will, will win a pack of seeds from Obsolete, because I know we have a pack of Obsolete seeds. So. Hurry up, guys. Hurry the fuck Tell up. Hurry up. <laughs> ounce of seeds. Yeah. Ounce of what seeds. Uh, ounce of seeds. How much does an ounce weigh? No, an ounce of... Oh, uh, no, sorry. How many seeds are in an ounce? You're right. You're right. You, got me, you got me on that one. You got me on that one. I didn't even get it either. Yeah, I wasn't thinking that. Was how right many seeds you, are in an ounce? We had it. We of, did. Of, how many seeds are in an ounce? There you go. How many seeds are in an ounce? Sorry, bro. It's two hour and 20 minutes. I did 20 minutes longer than normal. I'm, I'm fucked up. I'm tired. Yeah. I drank eight and a half. It was these double IPAs. Double man. IPAs. Are yeah. Yeah. Dude, we're making grow stones. Making grow stones. Thanks Don't to all the sponsors. Fine. Speaking of grow stones, thanks to Seeds now for putting together the fucking Seed Breeder Hour, Hour, Hour. Yeah. Hour, 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 Hour. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Check out their stuff for all their uh, specials. Check out their website, seedsreadernow.com. Check out their Seedsaholics. Make sure you spell it right uh, with an a instead of an O or O instead of an A. Is it, what is it? Seed O. Seed O. Holic. 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 All right. Seed O. Holics. Seed O. Holics with an S. Seed O. Holics with an S. Seed O. Holics with an S. There you go. Seed O. Holics with an S. I had to repeat all those things. Seed O. Holics. Seed O. Holics. All right. Yeah. Dot com, yeah. dot com, dot com, dot com, dot com, dot com, dot com. Right, there you go. That was a fade up. Uh, <laughs> thanks. M. M. T. I. I. That's what it is. And? Are you now, what are you, J. T. I? It's cool? R. T. I, isn't it? R. T. I. R. T. I. I, yeah. I, I say R. T. I sounds too much um. like a bus. But anyway, <laughs> R. T. I. V- yeah, thanks v- for VTI show. in the corner, but yeah, VTI in the corner over there, forever. VTI forever, VTI forever. Bro. Sounded good today, man. Um, the sound was good. The sound was good. Sorry for the delay. We won't have that ever again because now ever Mark again. is going to be getting off of work. He's going to be running over here as fast as he can. Oh, yeah. He's never going to be late because he's always going to want to leave work early. Absolutely, it's the perfect combination. It's yeah. Instead of like the opposite, where you're like, God damn it, I can't ever make it. <laughs> it's going to be like, I can't wait to get out and get yep. down there. And so he's going to make sure that uh, he's got the sound in, on check, which is all you guys really sh- should have to care about because the rest of it. The chat like, room was chill today, though, right? Yeah, no, man. No, check, cool. no one yelled. No one freaked out. Right. Okay, cool. Who's the three days of the Merry Pranksters? Is that coming and happening? Where's that? Two where, days now. Right now? It's uh, Beyond Key. Be on key. Where the hell is that? 1700 Logan. 1700 Logan. Be on key. Mary Pranksters with Terrapin Flyer. What the hell does that even mean, dude? I don't know. Does this mean anything? Yeah. Is this the Mary Pranksters? Like with the bus, Ken Kesey, everything? No way. He's Wait, back from the dead. Sense, he right? came back from the oh, dead. There. No way. It's his kid, Zane. Dude. Okay. Oh, Zane. I never heard about Zane. In mm-hmm. the membrane. So it's three days of people taking acid and 
dosing everybody around town. So basically, watch your drinks. <laughs> everybody watch, your, watch your drinks around 1700 And Logan. look for Vinny. And if you see Vinny, he's a little guy. He'll be jumping around. He'll be, t- he'll be telling you stuff. You have no idea what he's talking about. But then you'll be like, oh, wait a minute. Are you Vinny from the show? And then, you'll be, yeah, he'll, and then that'll be the end of it. Vinny yeah. from the Merry Pranksters. Oh, nice. now he's a Merry Prankster, officially. Um, I want to give a thanks to all the other sponsors. Way to Grow, Build the Soil. Uh, who else? Who else? Come on, don't mess around. Incredibles. Uh, come on, don't come on. Don't New Millennium. Wait, don't you have don't more to say three. about no, I'm not these gonna, no, 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 no. I'm just going through it because we're done. We're, <coughs> like, we're way over the time. Way over the time. You don't have to pull nobody up. We're just saying names. And yeah. I'm Can saying names. And I'm not, no, theme, theme no, that'll fuck me all up. Don't do that. Just don't even do that. that, that that's a very lame thing. The kid likes yeah, it. don't want that music. The kid yeah. likes it. I'm not a big fan. Yeah, it's not cool. And we're too, we're too, we're too twenty. We're fine, dude. Don't worry about that. But our buddies at Build a Soil, mm-hmm. our buddies over at fucking uh, Incredibles, our buddies over at fucking Millennium, Millennium. our buddies over at Seeds Here Now again and again and again, and oh, Cedaholics, yeah. of course, <laughs> just of course, these Cedaholics. guys. Growstone, Grow Stone. I drank all my beer. Right. Good job. And um, then this. <laughs> what? The bus. The bus <laughs> is here. <laughs> if you want to go get high, bus, go to 1700 and start licking, licking everything you see. Just lick everything. Just lick, <laughs> Just the, bus. lick the bus. <laughs> if you lick the bus, <laughs> you know, lick the tires of the bus. If you lick that bus, you will get high. Mostly Labrador. Yeah. <laughs> got a little Maui Maui but it's got a little but, Maui. Uh, I got cheats and chocolate. I want to thank the chat room for being around and chit chatting as usual, not not getting on our case about the sounds sounding bad because we didn't sound bad. I promise we're gonna get better. Um, mm-hmm. And a uh, big shout out to uh, CC taking care of little Nick at the house because he wasn't feeling too good, so now he's kind of stay home Aww. and watch Ghostbuster five times over and over again, the one, two, and three, and the car- cartoon and the other extended one of the Japanese version and wow. every version of Ghostbuster he has consumed in his brain so he is an official Ghostbuster now he <laughs> watched the Ghostbuster <laughs> documentary about people who are addicted to Ghostbusting oh wow he, he's done he's, he's pretty much he's all in graduated he's graduated in Ghostbusting I done gone graduated anyway the college of Zool shout out to Ace down at the farm and shout out to Andy and the boys and they're finally Grinding through their first round of things and moving ahead, and boys are mm. back in town, and everybody's been working. Boys are back in town. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you got to sing that. You knew that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that for any other reason than that, right there. Nice. Boys are back in town. The boys want to fight. You better let them. With a brand new truck. <laughs> oh. oh, oh. No, you're not going to put the boys. Sonny's are back dad in coming town. through. It's already. I it's fine. That. I'm done. I am Adam Dunn, uh, and I am done. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. See you next week. Some call it marijuana, some call it sense media, some call it lamb's bread, and some people call it call it. I muted them all. You're supposed to be thinking at that point. <laughs> <laughs> it's like audio engineering etiquette, brother. <laughs> yeah, that sounded good, man. What? Practically every one of the top 40 records being played on every radio station in the United States is a communication to the children to take a trip to cop out. Cool. They should be in a folder. It should be in an ADS folder under bookmarks.